this call the Douglas County Board of Commissioners um, October 16, 2018 Transportation Committee to order. Um, we'll go around the room as always is our rule. And my name is Kelly Robinson. I am the chairman of the committee. To my right, uh, Mark Teal, County Administrator. Jessica Theriel, Assistant to Mark Teal. Mike Mulcair, County Commission. Go Valentin, DOT Director. Jerry Watson, Multimodal Transportation Services Director. Elisha Liak, Assistant Program Manager with Transitions. Justin Risen with Transitions. Danielle Crow, Director of Communications and Community Engagement at the Collaborative Town. Very good. Thanks, everybody. Okay, and we do have a series of guests that are here, citizens. This, um, this meeting is being filmed um, for archiving and display for later. All right, so first up, um, Miguel. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a pretty full agenda, and we do have some visitors with us today. Yes. Uh, if we could, uh, if it be your pleasure to amend the agenda to allow some of them to uh, move up and uh, so we can get them out of here. They've got other, other commitments, if that were possible, and uh, one of them Mr. Mulcair, do you stand in agreement with that one? I do, absolutely. Okay. Uh, one of them is related to item number seven. <clears throat> well, related in a, in a not a very direct way, but a collateral way, to item, the Lee Road extension uh, item number seven. Okay. So uh, we have folks here from planning and development that yep. will introduce their Right, Ron Roberts, Planning Zoning Manager, and I have uh, Rebecca Kiefer from Clark Patterson in the lead. Hey, just real quick, as a quick, let's go ahead. Um, you guys have had a chance to take a look at the uh, meeting minutes. Let's go ahead and knock that out real quick. Mark? Yes, sir. Well, can we have those here? Has anybody had a chance to not look at them? Have y'all already seen them? Commissioner Mulcair? I'm good. Okay. You good? Gary? Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve the uh, September 18th meeting minutes. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Okay, any discussion? All, right. All in favor say aye. Aye, aye. Doc. Aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay, motion passes for the program meeting minutes. Yeah. Go ahead, um, again. leave the board. Uh, yes, uh, I uh, will pass the baton over to Ron Roberts who will introduce our consulting team on that project. Yes, thank you. I appreciate y'all indulging us. Uh, so we had a meeting uh, several months back um, on the small area study for Lee Road, which is the Lee Road 92 uh, intersection right there. And the what was decided was that we would come forward through the transportation subcommittee and bring these renderings out. We went ahead and took advantage of some public outreach opportunities at September Saturdays and had Clark Patterson and Lee set up and host a booth uh, there for uh, interactions. We also have this material on our website as well. Um, and so that was really what we wanted to do, was bring these concepts forward. In keeping with the timeline, the, the next phase that we would have would be to take this to the Board of Commissioners. Okay. And so uh, Rebecca Kiefer is here. She was going to report out what what uh, folks had to say at September Saturday. I believe Commissioner Robinson, you also stopped by. And Why don't you come in and sit and move that down so everybody can summarize this. I'm fine. All right. So I've also passed around mm -hmm. a hard reduced copy so that everyone can see it. Um, but this is the uh, version of the master plan that was um, unveiled to the public at the September Saturdays event. It was really well was received. Um, just having the, the master plan out there uh, encouraged a lot of folks to come and talk to us. Uh, we got some additional contact information um, from people interested in staying involved. And also, um, I'll leave these with Ron, but um, passed around some uh, informational sheets so that people could discern the different projects occurring on the road. Um, there's been uh, a little bit of confusion, I think, through the process with all the Lee Road projects. So just wanted to outline the different projects and where they were in the process or, um, you know, if, if that was available to, to be revealed, you know, to the public. All right, real quick, so just for context, so you're out um, in the public, what did you hear? Right. 
what, what was like deal? How could you like summarize just for the community? Just give context of sure. it, right? because it's really citizens are important. We're representative and extension of them, so mm -hmm. give that as context. Please. So I think um, the general sentiment is, you know, how quickly can this happen? Um, a lot, I think a lot of citizens have been hearing about the Labor Road extension for a long time and are anxious to get that. Uh, and then, of course, the development and, and anxious to, to help guide the, the type of development that's going in there. Um, so what I can do, um, you know, kind of give you a brief uh, summary of, of the development, um, the master plan, plan proposal. Um, but then also a lot of the, the public input is also education of what the county's participation in a plan like this is, um, that it's something that would be regulated through zoning, through um, different par park uh, investments and road investments, but that the county would not be necessarily participating in um, the development of the master plan, um, that this is to help uh, give developers um, a sense of um, you know, exactly what would be um, desired by the public and the Board of Commissioners um, should any kind of rezoning application come through. Um, so what we've done is identified, uh, on this version, identified um, each of the land uses, um, hopefully to also um, run alongside your economic development strategy um, and impact some of those. And then also, Commissioner Mulgaire, I know you had some um, concerns about sustainability and some of the natural parts. So we've got um, the juxtaposition of a couple of different kinds of green spaces, something very formal and civic um, for maybe uh, a, a county building up here. Um, but then, of course, the stormwater detention uh, we had talked about uh, a couple of months ago that would be a little bit more of a natural park, a, a way that people could interact with um, water in um, you know, a place that's, that's very developed. There's a kind of a natural area that you can go to and enjoy, um, especially down here with there being um, a lot of floodplain. Um, part of the proposal there is it, there's potential for some fields. I know, I know there are some fields already, but given that it's a floodplain, there aren't too many other uses um, that would be appropriate for there. So if, if there was need for um, unprogrammed overflow of fields, then that would be an appropriate place for it. But from a development standpoint, um, we've got plenty of parking for this development, and potentially, if it wanted to get denser and high, you know higher, um, then there would still be plenty of parking um, for those development figures as well. Where's your park? Um, it's in for a lot of multifamily. It's in Dex, so okay. in, in these areas. Um, but it's all along the street. Okay. There are a lot, and then we you still along the street. Certain. Just again, because we've got a camera that's running. Can you just go, you know, is it long fair road? Is it you know, sure. east? Just, just give a little context as you are talking. So we've got the Lee Road extension that um, does not have any parking along it. That's um, more of a um, you know an east to west connector that's made to keep cars moving. The streets inside the development are more Main Street type. We want people to be moving slowly. Um, accessing the retail and you know with the parking um, being of interest to successful retail um, we have them all uh, angle parking all up and down and then in the center of um, kind of the main street that would be kind of two-way angle parking similar to, to Highland North Carolina um, where you can access it from either side the intention of that is not only to provide parking, but then also to provide a, a slow main street um, accessible to ped pedestrians and safe to pedestrians. Um, so starting with the development up at the top, um, we've got two to three story development, um, some mixed use office and retail here in the lime green, some um, restaurants in the orange, um, with potential you know, office on, on the top floor. We've got multifamily with, of course, the parking. And this is three different styles of, of multifamily, um, with the, these more so being the less dense, maybe townhome, uh, single family attached, um, and maybe some civic buildings on the ends of those. Um, a potential school um, could be private, could be some small college. Um, campus, uh, a performing arts stage, and then this green space um, is tapered up 
um, there's a pretty big drop to where you could put a band shell in, close down a part of the road, and there are other road connections that could, could supplement during that time. And um, you could put in, in this area, um, from here down to here, um, several thousand, and then you could expand that to more roads that you close um, for additional capacity for larger events. Um, we've got a little bit of a, um, an arts district down here with more like four stories and different business incubators um, and potential parks built, recreation and parks buildings with restaurants um, fronting this main street. Um, and again, we've heard several times that there may be, be some need for some overflow um, of some of the civic uses <coughs> in this building. Development services potentially could move to another site. Um, and so we plan for a couple of those spaces. Um, some parks, buildings, um, and wanted to really connect to the adjacent neighborhoods. There were some existing roads stubbed out in um, the adjacent uh, parcels. And so what we've done is stubbed the roads from this development, kind of completed this development with these stubbed out roads, um, found some additional connections throughout here to the north there. Even in the public input, um, had some additional requests for them for, um, I believe it was somebody living on this road um, was interested in, I think they said FEMA owned maybe one, one or more of these parcels and was interested in being able to have access to this. So I know sometimes that can be um, controversial, but that was a problem. Yeah, I, I think with given the <coughs> proximity to the floodplain here. Yeah. So there's another stub out road here that um, could connect it mm -hmm. here, and then it's already connected here in the plan. So some other opportunities for connection, for integrating and, and connecting uh, this road network even more, and not just dead ending it and you know causing other uh, volume impacts just as a result of the of the scale of development here. So the more we can connect it, um, the less of an impact. Gonna have and, and, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, all right, so what I'm hearing is, and, and Miguel, I'm sure you're weighing on this from the Harbor Transportation as we go um, from the east to the west. Uh, there's just two lanes of four lanes. Four lanes. All right, there is four lanes. And I heard her say that we're going to be able to access parking both ways, you know, like higher. Okay, I get that. Um, and I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing density, and I'm thinking traffic. I heard a, com a comment that, okay, we want to slow it down. So what is the feel for this? Because when I think east-west connector, when we use this sort of as analogy, you move. You move through, but you're able to get in and out quite well, right? Um, this feels a little bit slower. And I, I mean, so what am I feeling as I go through this area? And it's hard for me to, go ahead. Well, essentially, there, there's going to be two uh, different fast facets of transportation, there's going to be the through connectivity, which will be the Lee Road extension, yep. and that is part of the corridor. Yep. Then off to the side yep. is this proposed Second development that's going to have its own internal roads, different ambiance, different feel, different speed limits for sure, mm -hmm. uh, with a lot more cross connectivity. So, uh, you're, uh, so this is to, to use your analogy, this is not either or, this is a little bit of both. Mike, does it feel that we can get in and out easily? Yeah. I mean, I think about Chastain Park, I mean, yeah. I've been all over the metro Atlanta, I know the different sphere feelings, and I mean, they are what they are. I just want to make sure I understand what I'm hearing. Yeah, the, the advantage of this is, um, versus Chastain, I've been around Atlanta long enough to know that just morphed and grew yeah. and grew and grew and impinged on you know, uh, really a residential area from an existing little local park into something much right. bigger and much more demanding on traffic mm -hmm. and people's nerves. <laughs> this being designed this way, I think will uh, eliminate a lot of the issues with, that uh, people at the Chastain area have experienced and have dealt with and, and have had to modify their, you know, their lifestyle. So uh, I think, you know, on the face of it, this is a, a good, very good uh, plan. I noticed you have a traffic circle on the uh, east-west uh, that has a somewhat of a 
uh, slowing, calming uh, effect on, on uh, through traffic. But that's not a bad thing, because you give people four lanes and they think it's an interstate. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Would you uh, go into a little like, explanation of these other green areas? That, uh, are those residential lots? Or? Yes, yes. So, and they vary in size. Um, these lots here, um, we've tried to mirror the size of the lots of the existing neighborhood here, likewise uh, along this frontage. Um, these get a little bit larger, and then these become a little bit more of a, a estate lots. Mm -hmm. um, these also are not in the, I think, original parcel boundary. So. That, um, these just represented kind of the high point of the site and could be a, a, a phase where you're adding the municipal um, building there and adding these lots. Um, but these are larger, a couple of acres, um, whereas those are, are closer to half an acre and you get as small as about a third of an acre. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a mix. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, a mix of that, um, some single family attached um, to the apartments and then some second story lofts as well. Mm -hmm. How many acres is this area? I mean, again, I know it's just sort of a, a, an area map that's conceptual. What does that encompass? Close to 300 acres. Mm -hmm. Bill, anything else? I mean, so the, the sharing other, this here, what is there an action item that needs to come out of this? Not at this point, and certainly not related to this, but I, I will add a comment about the, uh, the ownership of uh, uh, FEMA, of mm -hmm. one or more parcels. Typically, that's not exactly how it works. The ownership, the uh, the ownership actually resides with the county or the municipality, and FEMA funds go to mm -hmm. to the purchase. But it's actually either county or or city property. In this case, it'd be county property. So, to the extent there are such lots, uh, there is a restriction when you use federal FEMA mm -hmm. funds that it be open space. So if, if those slots, those parcels can be identified, they can be incorporated into the open space. Yes, they can be pulled well, we can, we can figure out which ones those are. Mm -hmm. um, be. But uh, the only other comment that I would make about uh, the, <coughs> the road itself is that while this is a planning uh, study, the road has a, its own engineering study that will define the actual route. This is schematic, conceptual, um, made to fit and connect the two endpoints that we're looking at land. Con connectivity. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the item on the agenda today is going to uh, set in motion the actual engineering study component that goes to the design of the actual route. Uh, which may mirror this or it may deviate from this. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and given the, the floodplain here, um, this could be you know, substantially changed, but at this point we're crossing perpendicular to the, the channel of it. That's one of the bigger engineering feats. Mm -hmm. Anything else we need? Ron, are you okay? I'm okay. I just want to add that we are submitting this as a Louisville Centers Initiative as well. Um, and just if you know, moving forward, I guess next stage would be to bring to the BOC. So the Liberal Centers already starts with right there by the Magistrate Building, the City of Douglasville, all the way down to the river, right? So mm -hmm. this is not included, or it just it only incorporates that it's this piece. area. We have to widen it to you know, Delaware here. Is mm -hmm. this piece, Commissioner? This this piece alone. Mm -hmm. so we, we're extending what's already in place. Correct. Adding, yeah, adding to the Highway 92. Right. LCIA. Right, the existing highway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mike, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. You want to keep it together? I want to keep them going based on your point. Do you need anything else? No, that's it. Uh, the only other thing I know at the September Saturday's event, you had mentioned uh, attending your open house. So um, I just got the details of that today. I want yeah. to see if that was something you yes. still would like us to mm -hmm. attend and yes. get some input. Okay. Yeah. I tweet them. I'll have to make sure. We'll get it. Real quick, that, that reminds me. Character area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I do have those as well. Okay. Then, All right. I didn't want to forget that. <laughs> Probably the easier for this format. We do have some land uses identified. I'll just throw this one out. So we've been to a couple of uh, public events to date. Um, mm -hmm. 
with this plan and um, at the September Saturday event identified um, the full corridor with uh, what land uses would um, kind of radiate off of the um, Leroy corridor as the, the full extended corridor with the extension plus uh, Bowmower Road. We are moving into um, actually doing line work and rendering similar to this master plan um, to be able to show that full corridor with its cross section, um, streetscaping, sidewalks on either side, uh, and the, the land uses we're proposing. But at this point, the um, different character areas for these activity centers have been um, pushed out to the public and, and sought some feedback, and um, they've all been pretty positive. Mm -hmm. uh, you, again, this is for Commissioner Lowell Carey. You yeah, that's what we're looking for, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, rec recognize the reality of uh, you know where we are presently, and, and in the sense that we need to try to preserve, or not just preserve, but enhance uh, the character of, of the uh, you know the different districts. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, I think based on some of your early feedback on that, um, kind of on this portion, um, the Bomar Road portion. Those are reserved to be a little bit more um, residential, preserving oh, the, yeah. the single family residential with maybe some neighborhood commercial at the activity center. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but then as you um, go further out in the road um, at, to the east, um, then it becomes a little bit more commercial along the border. Yeah, any, any uh, I'll call it, I don't want to call it, I don't know, that's not a good term, but uh, commercial development in terms of, of uh, nodes mm -hmm. and you know, community centers. Uh, Commercial centers, as, yep. as opposed to linear growth, mm -hmm. which we, we want to avoid, like play. Right. Okay. So. So so yes, these would be the activity centers with some of it, you know, extending in a in a linear fashion. But if is the interest in preserving residential as, as mm -hmm. they connect? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, then, would you be open to maybe something um, single family attached townhomes and things and along the street front. Yeah, based on our, our housing study and, and the, uh, the needs that are identified mm -hmm. in that and and relative to the appropriate places, yeah, I'm, I wouldn't sit yeah. here and say yes or no, but you know. Yeah, yeah just add, kind of as we're going through the, the exercise and that's that's helpful feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no. As yeah. some of these are Very good. Do we allow to have townhomes, guys? Do we? Yeah, we, you know, one of the things we looked at doing also in these areas is what the city's done for the for the jail, which would be they've added some different uh, lowering of square footage, um, adding in some different uh, zoning designations that we don't have currently in the county. So that that would be on down the road um, that we would put in place in our unified development code so we can cover those those type growths and, and anticipate these these live work play type uh, node sites. We can make some recommendations on what zoning changes need to be made to. I would say, you know, with caution, because uh, I'm sure the, the city's codes are, are pretty good and, and, and fit them well, but uh, to the extent that I'm maintaining our character areas, yes. it, it, may, it may be appropriate, you know, not to do exactly what the city is doing, mm -hmm. you know, in the county of the more, more uh, rural or, or uh, low density areas. Right. But certainly it's, it's an open book right now but just uh, a bit of caution that we don't need to mirror. Correct. Yeah, that's a mixed one. Uh, yeah. I'm with you on that. Well, like the city, the city in certain instances, I mean, they have a higher density, higher low than anything with us. But we know we need housing, mm -hmm. perhaps, um, that, that is affordable. It's not even about affordable, but I know sometimes that's taken the wrong way. But just everybody is not about three acre minimums and, right. you know, and, and yeah. so forth. So, okay, I think we get it. So, All right. real quick. How long, I mean, what's your packaging on this? And I'm just bringing this for our own turn, but as far as being able to complete this assignment, say this scope of work is done, based on the, the input, uh, a poor meeting that you may attend, just to mm -hmm. sort of bounce things off of, what do you, what do you see by way of timing for deliverable and complete the scope of work? So we're hoping to have a draft of the document to staff by the end of November. Okay. Um, give staff a couple of weeks to review it, um, release it. Um, mm, release it mid-December for uh, public consumption, uh, and then come see you at the January Board of Commissioners meetings for a presentation. Mara, you okay? Mm-hmm. Miguel? Yes, sir. Anything else for our witness? 
Thank you all Please. very much. No, thank you for indulging me. Sorry to appreciate that. Miguel, I'll eat lunch. Great. No Will we get a copy of those maps? We need to get a copy of it. Yes, we have them right, right. online as well. Okay, but we won't. We need map the wall. Oh, so we get some <laughs> wall maps? Well, um, no, seriously. For the, the, the final bill, we'll also we'll get them um, okay. mounted and on glossy. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to be that big. Yeah, he needs glossy, but I need one for my wall that talk to Okay, just, a, just yeah. a paper? Yes. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I can bring it uh, to the... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. All right, uh, Chairman. Uh, yes. We then can return to the normal sequence of the agenda. And uh, first item that we had is an update on the Connect Douglas uh, fixed route. And I'll pass it on to Gary. Director Watson. A preamble and then introduce this uh, consultant. So my, my opening comment on that would be that there has been a lot of behind the scenes work done on these routes over the last three, four weeks, six weeks. Um, Justin Rising is becoming a frequent flyer from his uh, home in Orlando up to Douglas County. And, um, I know we got extended stay right there on Thornton Road, <laughs> brand new, you know, hotel, but go ahead. Yeah. And uh, they've, they've ridden the routes a number of times. In fact, we spent some time this morning going over them again. Okay. And so I'm going to turn it over to Justin. I'll transition and let uh, him and his uh, staff uh, tell us where we're at right okay. now. Justin. Justin, we yield to you. Thank you. Well, right now, I would say that we're about 95% complete on the direction that we want to go for, for the routing systems, for the fixed route systems. Mm -hmm. um, part of it is keeping the mindset that this fixed route uh, also will have some uh, percentage of augmented fixed route to it, meaning that we don't only need to have designated stops because we're building it so that as people's needs change on that particular route, they can stop there too, as long as we have identified it as a safe stop. Okay. Um, where we've molded this to, and I really don't have anything to give out as of today because we're still running routes. Um, the big piece for us is, is obviously looking at the traffic patterns, uh, that we're not in traffic, that we're trying to move these routes away from traffic as best we can throughout the day. And, and obviously from morning to night, traffic patterns change all throughout the day and in Douglas. Um, also keeping in mind that there are areas of, of safe access as well as some areas that aren't very safe. You know, we have four lane highways that are hard to get across in some areas that have two, three, four miles between lights. And so we have to be very careful and cognizant that we're not dropping people off and as I've told Gary today, make them frogger across the, the four lane highway to get to wherever they need to go. So we're making sure that the routes are, are moving in the right direction. We've also identified points of contact that, that identify places in the, in the city that we want to make sure that people have access to and have some overlap. Uh, where we are today uh, is that we have taken the routes uh, of the 10 and the 20 and I've basically put, turned them into two circulars. Um, and there's some additional connectivity off them, but in the, in the circulars, they have a couple overlap points, uh, like the downtown by the convention center, uh, Walmart being a point as well, uh, currently the multimodal center being a point, where these routes overlap. And that way that throughout a given period of time, you can get to 65, 70% of the community within a quarter mile walk uh, by being on these routes or connecting with the routes. Uh, we're also looking at time frames of when we need to have extra vehicles on the road. When traffic patterns go up, we wanna make sure that we're able to easily add another vehicle uh, because we wanna make this convenient to the ridership, both for work, for social, for shopping, for medical, all those things. And what we're competing with is, is people's usage in their cars. So we want to make sure that the time that they're on a bus to go from their house or their apartment uh, to a place to shop and back isn't two or three hours, but they can do it in an hour's time frame. So that's one of the, the considerations. And then the last that we're putting in place is, is making sure that the input uh, from the communities that, that had some concern or were worried about the road structures or the road fare came through that we're moving this in a matter that the vehicles can, can get through safely throughout the community so that we're not impeding upon road structures that are thinner or have historical value to them and we have to go in and make specific modifications. Uh, obviously there's a lot of road construction going on right now that's in consideration. 
uh, that road work and, and the adaption and the expansion of those roadways will uh, change and, and ebb and flow the transit as we move forward. Um, but right now we're reaching about 95% of the communities as well that were identified in the study as far as shops, apartment complexes, housing community, uh, communities, medical facilities, religious facilities, locations that people can easily and safely get in and out of the vehicle and typically within 30 minutes from the time that you get on the bus to the time that you're fully around. Um, one of my personal goals in this is that if you're an apartment complex, uh, you can be at a location uh, within 20 minutes to shop and there'll be a bus that'll be back around in the next 25 to 30 minutes to where you can get back on. So realistically speaking, you could shop from an apartment complex almost similar to how you do in your car right now. From the time it takes you to get in your car, drive somewhere, uh, get to a shopping, take care of your business, get back on a vehicle and get back home, you're not gonna have to worry about your, your frozen uh, vegetables or your frozen food uh, thawing on the trip or your, your food going bad because you're not gonna be on a bus for two or three hours. Um, we've kept in mind the demographics of usership. Uh, we're making sure we're reaching things like uh, your, your great parks that are here, uh, your medical facilities, the library, uh, points of entertainment like the mall, so that this doesn't just meet the needs of, of one demographic, but can encompass young to very, very old that need to have access to this type of system. So a lot of times when you think of fixed route, you are thinking about a, a big circle that someone's doing and you've got to make it fit within your needs and, and bad walking patterns and bad structures to get around. That's not what we're building here. We're building a real world, usable, uh, augmented fixed route system that is gonna meet the needs of your community. Okay. Stay right there for a second. I'll take maybe some comments, but before you, you continue on. All right, so you talked about the route, the 10 to 20 making them circular, so that's concentrated more west. Um, uh, and I heard you say, um, you know, not withstanding the different demographic um, 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 areas. Um, I heard entertainment, I heard restaurant, I heard medical, I heard all those things. But what about workforce, which is uh, a major component to, to us even considering this economic development? Uh, will you speak to eventually how do we also ensure this, everything that you just explained, uh, that the universe is expanded to include uh, a true work center, um, which the mall is, is a work center, it's retail, but it's not the same as the Thornton Road, corridor, the Riverside corridor, or the 78 corridor? How, how do we get there? Yeah, and those corridors are actually built out pretty well right now. Um, we've, we've looked at them, we've rode them uh, a few times now. Uh, because they're out and back corridors, uh, what really becomes uh, the review process is the usability of them once they're operational. Uh, and once you start putting people on the buses and you see how people get to those uh, locations, you'll be able to ebb and flow based on the needs. Um, of the ridership. I mean, th those are routes because of the direction that they go, that the usership is built out. We do, um, and great point there, both of these routes uh, on the 10 and 20 will be augmented in the AM and PM to make sure that they get to the park and ride facilities. Yeah. Obviously during the daytime we don't have a lot of usage there, but those same facilities will help push people out to the 30 and 40 as well. And again, again go, go back to the premise that when you say 78% of the people in Douglas County go over to Atlanta to mm -hmm. work, right? They're, they're going to obviously um, uh, go to work. Uh, within our, um, our micro uh, you know, economy, um, you're doing the same, it's the same thing. You've got downtown Douglas you know, the 10 to 20 that's co tightly concentrated, but yet people still, uh, there's a bigger feeding trough, you know, in essence, which is along the Thornton Corridor. Uh, that also goes east. And I, I guess I'm just trying to see that, uh, that we've acknowledged that and that what I'm hearing is that are these rolling out together or are we doing, what, do you, what am I hearing? I'm not going to even try to lead this conversation. Sure. I'm, what am I hearing? Yeah, our goal is to have all four routes roll out at the same time okay. so that they're all operational at the same time and that all the routes feed the additional routes so that your internal structures will feed to the centers of pickup and then push out in those directions. One of the things that we've talked about is that um, even you look at your, your daily commute patterns of your, your Route 30, your Route 40, they, they incorporate a certain work location, but they'll actually start their day here in town. They'll actually begin at our park and ride facilities and move people to the work location. So, because obviously you can't get to there unless you've got some type of movement. So everything pushes out with people to get 
to the extension of where we go. And at the end of the day, they'll work the exact same way, except in the opposite. They'll pull back people. And there, there'll be some augmentation, I believe, in some of the routes as it based on traffic, uh, even on some of our vehicle usage. But it's we don't want to deadhead vehicles out and have them loop around in a particular area. We want to use those vehicles to get as many people out. And then they'll work in their given locations. And then when they get done working in those locations, they will pull people back to the community. You know, I mean, I get like air commission located. You know, I get airplanes. There's some airplanes that are very frequent every hour and an hour. And then to go to Paris and Japan, it's, you know, once, you know, international flight is a little bit longer as far as, you know, between the, the flights leave. So I, I, I get, there's probably a difference. I just, we just want to acknowledge, again, this is being filmed of what this is and what it's not. And we want to be able to set um, the citizens' expectations um, on what they can expect out the gate. That's all. Absolutely. But, but thank you. Gary, you want to keep going? Or that was it? No, no. Mike, y'all want to weigh just, in? Just one, just one real finite question. Uh, the stops will be on the mall, on the mall, in the mall property, not on the periphery. Is that is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and not just the malls, but some of the areas of, of uh, shopping uh, that we've targeted for um, <coughs> people to be able to get to. Uh, we'll be speaking with the actual mall owners, okay. depending on which one they are, so that we can have a guaranteed spot for them as well. Even to the point if we can build out shelters or have them help sponsor some shelters so that we have uh, good locations for people to know to get there. Uh, and those, and we'll have a, a coordinated time structure so people can understand that they're just not waiting around forever for a bus to show up, uh, because that's going to be part of the, the process of getting to a location, shopping, and understand they can get back on a vehicle and move. Okay, and you, you touched on a key word for me, and that's uh, sponsor, sponsorships, and whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's come up in our conversations uh, as a means to offset, make our dollar go further, basically. Yes, sir. By having, uh, you know, I won't make any names yet, but uh, we, we're giving them sponsorships in the community. We're giving a lot of opportunity to, to local business partners to, to be a part of this, okay. uh, both as a representative um, out front and fiscally. So our goal is to make sure that we have uh, plenty of opportunities for those individuals. And, and uh, not just on a sales front, but there are other activities in the community as well uh, that can draw upon better access. And yeah. we'll make sure that those partners help participate in the shared cost of this public program. Well, perhaps uh, even uh, augmentation affairs and stuff like that for their employees. And sure. They could, they, could, they could actually, uh, one of the, the pieces that we'll be talking to them as well is not just bringing customers, but their employees. And there are transit benefits at a tax-free basis that they can help provide to their employees to get back and forth to work. So if you're one business competing against another one in the community and you both are on uh, this fixed route system, you might get a better draw of employees because now you're offering to pay to get them back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. And how great of a benefit is that? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And then uh, one, other, one other question, I'm going, and this kind of, kind of sprung on everybody, uh, probably not anticipated, uh, is what is what's the future of Sunday operations? Because people still go to the church, and they still go uh, shopping. They may not go to the doctor on, on Sunday, uh, but there is a need for public transit on Sunday. What what is your what does your crystal ball say? I would defer that back to Gary because I think the biggest piece of that would be the fiscal element of it, mm -hmm. uh, and then as well as what the operational time frames would be. Uh, we've worked at looking at the operational hours of Monday through Saturday right now right. Um, because businesses flow at different structures, uh, and, and obviously Sunday is a different operational scale for, yeah, for, for all. Okay, I just want that to fall off the sure. off the edge of the map. So. And in our current route structures, we have many uh, religious points that are with, fall well within uh, a short walking distance of the system today. What's the what's, what's the can we quantify the, the number of people that make needs may be met here? I mean, do we? What is the base of people? What's the base population? Y'all remember? Yeah, no. What? And you might have a particular number, what we will do is once we kind of sit down and finalize what the routes look like, yeah. we can go back and then better identify what communities and the number of people that are in those communities. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to get ahead of the, ourselves until we can finally get down to a point where we feel pretty solid about what routes are being brought up. And, and again, I, I do appreciate your presence. And, and ultimately, um, again, um, well, and this is, is sort of our initial meeting as far as presentation is concerned. And, and we do have a public hearing tonight, right? Correct. Unrelated, but sort of kind of related as well. The application is only the application, right. but we never know what the questions may come up, right? Yes. Sir. Okay. All right. But w one of the things that we we, we want to make sure that okay, here we are, mid October, going into first November. Uh, we've got two months. 
there was supposed to be a deeper dive, um, an operational budget, for the sake of conversation, right, that has real metrics, real ridership, um, things that we have sort of been um, framing that we were looking, um, and I'm expecting that there's going to be more detail that comes out. Do you see that coming soon? Or Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay, Commissioner Volker, I know that's yeah. important. We, we're not moving off that. We know it has to be delivered, Gary. Yes, sir. And, and Justin has already given us part of that information, but Justin, Miguel, and, and I haven't really had an opportunity to sit down and talk about that. And we wanted to have that conversation before we brought it back to the committee. But it, it, and this, this is important as we, uh, you know, I tend to be very straightforward. We're going through our commission, um, county ministry, you know, we're going through our annual budgeting process. Mm -hmm. The annual, you guys, the IRs. We also have gone down this path of long term capital planning. Right. We also know we have a <coughs> boss. Right. We've got three you know, verticals about to come up that has operating impacts right, that the county needs to deal with. Uh, we now have a new bus system that's coming online and we need more defined numbers. Right. So we, we can't kick the can no further along and we've got to do this in, in, uh, in these next two months to make sure we got a proper setting of priorities and how this is going to get done. And so I, I cannot overemphasize or underemphasize we need this data. And, we, 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 and it has to somewhat match, at least by um, at least a draft. We know it's living and breathing. We're okay with that. As you go further along, it'll get refined. But we, it, it can't be at the end, we're ready to go live. Okay, here's the budget. It has to be interrupted and know that we're partners along with this. And we need you to be our partner and say, well, look, we need data right now. We'll know, we'll, we know how to look at it like, okay, plus and minus. I mean, we're, we, but we, we need this data. Commissioner Volker, will you stand with me on the need for this? We are adopting the budget our last meeting in December. So that's that's the point here, what the implications are on that budget and what the expectations are to and from that budget. We, we will have that information for you far ahead of that that time. And, and I will say that, that the numbers that Justin has, has given us uh, is in line with the, the number that I submitted to the county administrator for the 2019 budget, and that's that $2 million figure. We just got to see the detail. I mean, we, we've been voting with two million for a minute. We just we need more detail. Um, the, 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 my, my, our full board needs it, and you know we work uh, quite well with the Department of Transportation to get this passed. But the citizens need it. We need more detail, just so they can have comfort. And I, I, I that's all we're asking. We we'll need detail. I trust the numbers will work. But you know, we'll leave it at that. Um, all right. Anything else? I want to keep it going because we've got. Um, Anything else you want to put well, on this topic? I think the only other comment I would have is that the plan is still to uh, have Route 40 connect with Cobb Route 30 to provide access to the AT Home Station. Okay. Uh, we've just confirmed a meeting uh, a couple of hours ago with Cobb County on November 1st to continue those discussions. Awesome. Thank you, Gary. Are you, will he be involved or that's just county only? How does it work? What's the just program? will be involved. Okay, I didn't I wasn't pushing it. I was just, we thought you. Okay. Mr. Mulker, does that meet your yep. time frame? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mark? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, mean, I won't be at that. I'm going to let that be, but we good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Anything else? Jess? We're good right now. Mike, anything else? I mean, we got him here. Okay, well, one last thing. The bus stops, the shelters. The need to educate people, um, um, I'm, and I'm sure we're going to get into our um, how do we make sure that the public stays aware of this. Um, uh, I, I think it's going to be how do you get feedback <coughs> from what's working and what's not working? How do you measure? Like I know you'll lay it out, you'll plan it, you plan it, but how do you get real time feedback from the citizens to know that it, it's meeting a need? How, how do you capture that feedback? Uh, the easiest is just actual ridership data. Uh, that's the first for us. If, if, if there are, if, if the routes are operational, if people are using them, uh, our MTD data will suggest right off the bat what the usage is. Um, the other piece Hold is on, though. Let me move on. All right. So is there data that tells me I don't know this? So here I'm going down the path. I'm going on route. Here's some three, four bus stops. But every time somebody gets on a single bus stop, do you know how many people load it right there at that moment versus the next stop versus the next stop? How I mean, is it that level um, that, you know, sub data where for each stop you knew how many people got on or got off? Does it recalibrate? <coughs> how does it work? Yes, sir. We'll be uh, every every mile that a person rides, 
becomes your national transit data, which is your long-term fiscal uh, recruitment for the program. So through, our, through the software, through the program, and through our drivers, when someone gets on a vehicle, that data is being recorded. As long as they ride, they can ride two blocks, they get off, we're going to count that time as ridership mm -hmm. because that, that, that total collective data is used. You can, I, I get how if I swipe, you know I got on. If I ch ch change it, you know I got on. So you, you get the load. Mm -hmm. But how do you know how we got off? I pull the bell, full roll off. It's just some type of beam. I mean, how do you know? Is somebody sitting there with a clicker? They actually have beaming technology. Um, that then we get, have it. We will get it. That's one of the technologies that we're going to have a conversation about. Um, so it allows when a person goes in or out of a bus, um, it scans them for, for being in and out of that vehicle. And that also helps with fare box collection too, so that you know that uh, how many people were actually on the vehicle compared to the money that was there when they got on the vehicle too. Okay, validation. Okay. And Justin has, has mentioned NTD, which is the National Transit Database, and that's what our annual FTA funding is based on. So okay. it's critically important that wow. we collect that um, data okay. appropriately. Okay. I mean, I'm with it, Mike. I mean, I'm, I'm just. Yeah. I mean, how do you know when I get on a plane? Yeah. I know, no, no, but I'm, I'm yeah. saying, I mean, you... It, it's more of a problem how you know you got off. It might be hiding in the bathroom, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that is, sounds like uh, the technology is uh, mature enough to satisfy the NTBD. NTD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last point, and this is related, we, since we're talking, and I don't, uh, I'm sure we're going to get to fares and ticket machines. Yes. Um, and, I don't know if he needs to be here for this. How do you want to handle this conversation? Stay on the uh, I don't know if it's, Justin's welcome to stay, but I don't know that he really needs to be involved in the fair okay. conversation at this time. Okay. Yeah. And the, the reason I bring it up, we, we talk about fairs in the, in, the ex, in the absence of data. Right? So here I am, I'm, I'm, being, you know, I'm just now, now you got my hat on, I'm like, okay, so. You won't, you know, I'm, we're going to talk about a number in the context of what to cover what. Right? Okay, so I need, I need some estimates on the number of people that's going to get in and get off on the route. Now I can begin to do, you know, I, I can multiply quite well to get out to a number that I need to get to. Like, what is the revenue that I think I want to get? What is the assumption I'm making? And else, we're just, I'm just putting that out there. That, that's why your data is necessary. So. I guess even before we get into that, I don't know if we can commit to a solid number other than a range or some type of, we'll begin to entertain it because without data, we're just picking numbers. It, it becomes just sort of a, yeah. a, a market like, okay, it sounds good, it feels good. Now, I don't know if I want to go with, you know, as long as they can continue over the cob and hopefully tomorrow, and so it needs to be 250 to marker. I don't know if that's the right answer or not. I don't think it should be less than that because it's like, well, that, that, no, I'm not going to do that. I get it. But I'm not, I, see, I can't even make that decision. I mean, I, I teach the statistics, and so now we got a decision tree. And I'm like, mm -hmm. guys, I ain't got enough data to even do this, but I want us to be real careful about this pricing. And Mike, like, hold me to this. You know. Well, the, the only reference point, uh, really, is, is, is comparable operations, com comparable population densities, comparable well, routes. I, I have a chart to distribute when you, we you talk about the conversation. Yeah. But I want to. But our data is important, right? I mean, this is, at, at some point, we need our data. We need our estimation. Like, I think about pool, everybody else's feasibility, everybody else's comparables. But this, was, this is what we're looking for now. Come up with my own numbers that we can get comfortable with. And so I, I mean, I need that, but can we also get our own so that as we're looking at everybody else's, I'm looking at mine. I need my data so that I'm looking at my, my multiplier and now I can look at everybody comfortable, everybody else's feasibility. Now I can get more comfortable, but right now, everybody else is dictating my, my hand. And I want to know whether or not I need to go all in or if I need to fold. But I, I think I'll get it. Let's, let's keep going. Well, if I, I may add to that. Yeah. Um, historically, when you look at a national program when they start, um, the idea sometimes is, is that Fairbox has to be uh, a particular offset when you're getting started up. And <coughs> What you have to realize is that the heavy fiscal lift that you will get on the return of this program is through your ridership collection, not the fare box. Okay. Um, and so, um, so I think you get a ride about ride away. Your, your fare box is is not the money that you're getting to recuperate the cost of the program. Your your database, your ride time, 
that you receive back from the FTA and DOT is what's going to cover the majority of those expenses. So mm -hmm. the reason I say that is, is that you've got to make sure that your fare box isn't a barrier to entry mm -hmm. so that you end up losing ridership because you price yourself out because you try to recoup so much money off fare box that now someone chooses not to get on in the first place which the majority of that money that you would get is from ridership. You lose twice. Right, exactly. A good example was um, uh, Orlando when they opened up the Sunrail. Uh, the first 60 days they used the similar program, CMAC dollars, to help <coughs> offset the cost of that ridership for the first 60 days. And it was standing room only. Uh, then they set the fare box price and the fare box was so high that all the seats were available. So they had to come back and readjust the cost of the program so that they could get their ridership where it needed to be because they understood that it was the, the actual ridership that was going to pay for the majority of the program, not the $1 or $2 that you collect when someone gets on a so bus. So don't get greedy. I wouldn't try and get too much off of it. You know, and other things to think about is that make it as easy as possible uh, for collection purposes. So you know, a lot of times people will say $1.75 or $2.50. Quarters get heavy real quick, and the time it takes to count <coughs> quarters it takes longer than dollars. And all that time matters because now you're taking staff hours and time to collect and pull that money aside and things like that. So the easier you can create it, the, the easier it is for the entire process to operate. Okay, we'll let it go. Here we're good. Okay, you're good. You're welcome to stay, but we're, we're good on this topic? Yes, sir. All right, all right. let's keep moving. Next topic? All right. All right. Okay. So there's no action. This was just sort of a no, FYI. Okay. All right, yeah. fair enough. No action. All right, let's keep on. All right, let's keep on. Okay, we're going to have another update from uh, Danielle Crow of the Calabria firm. And she's been quite a busy lady over the next last few weeks as well. And okay. we'll continue until at least through the end of the year. So, Danielle. Danielle, welcome back. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Look forward to working with you all as well. Of course, we've been anxiously reading uh, route information because we'll be back out there um, engaging with the citizens and getting their input on once those routes are yeah, finalized. Yeah. But um, the matter at hand is our October proposed activities and deliverables. Uh, but I guess before I get into that, it's been some time since our previous um, Transportation Committee meeting and uh, several things occurred thereafter. You all were already informed that we'd be participating in September Saturdays, but I did want to provide some metrics on that as well. Those were very high visible activities and I'm glad that we were able to be out there and lead the effort on behalf of the county. Um, the cutaways were also on display. Uh, and beyond the exposure that we received from just being out there, we directly interacted with 375 people. And so I think that's a lot in, in four hour span on two Saturdays. Uh, we also collected nearly 100 uh, signups for additional information, people wanting more information. And although we were there to share information on all of the services, I would like to add that people did ask, when are the buses starting? Um, there was also another instance um, where um, Chairman Jackson Jones actually came over to the tent because there was a citizen with a concern and that concern and they were after they received more information um, they walked away with a very positive feedback and I think that speaks volume about people receiving information and people being informed and also I think that's a nod to our efforts that the chairwoman felt confident enough to walk them over to us and for us to handle it so Grateful for that opportunity. Thank you. Just real quick, you, you mentioned uh, our intent was just to have the cutaways just there for um, an accessory. Here's the bus, but I, I heard that they were put in use. How did that happen? Can y'all speak to Gary or whomever? How, how did we, uh, yeah. Mark, are you here? I wasn't involved in that process. No. Um, it, it, no, we, well, they, they typically use our, our 12 and 15 passenger vans to shuttle yeah. people back and forth from the courthouse to the parking lots. We were in a situation uh, that last weekend where we didn't have any of our vans available. So we asked them if they would be willing to use one of the new cutaways. Uh, they did, and the feedback was very good on and that. An un unanticipated upside, Mr. Wolf, mm -hmm. is that while we just head out there just to, you know, I'm sure with the car out front, 
Um, people were standing in line like, okay, they were looking for more utility. It's like, okay, it's cute, but can we get down the street? I mean, yeah. so I, I Does think, it roll? Yeah. Right, does it move? I mean, like, okay, okay. I mean, they were literally waiting for where's the driver was to come, and so then that's when we had to get in action. But I, I just want to say that that was a positive upside. It was anything critical. It was just the fact that there was a need uh, for the bus. Well, okay, you got it here. Can we get on it? Can we go? So, but thank you. I don't know if we had any numbers on that, but probably not. It was just moving, so right. let it go. Go ahead, Danielle. Sorry about that. So um, the next item that I'd like to share is one that we mentioned previously, but uh, I'll go into greater detail, is that we're hosting a uh, open house on the 23rd. We did reach out to each of the commissioners and coordinated with Sherry Mathis to ensure that the date was one that was uh, conducive for attendance by the commissioners. Uh, so it was adjusted to the 23rd. The um, in your packet on the third sheet is one of the flyers. Uh, this has been distributed electronically as well as, as print, but it just gives some detail. So basically, it's a community-wide um, celebration where we're uh, inviting people to come out and, um, I guess, similar to September Saturdays, is, is touch the truck. So they can see the new vehicles, the cutaway, uh, the new van, as well as the handicap accessible vehicle. Two of those vehicles, the cutaway and the, the new uh, commuter vans, will be branded uh, in time for the event with a prototype. Yep. And we'll share that as well, Gary. I don't want to steal his thunder. Uh, he'll be getting to that as well. Yep. Uh, but um, patrons have been invited. Uh, there will be representatives from SRTA uh, as well as Georgia Commuter Options. So we've invited um, CERTA. Um, because as you know we're moving to the new breezeway car so there's an opportunity for them to share that information with our community as well as when we did the first phase of public involvement we learned that people felt that the express bus route um, schedule was hard to follow so there's an opportunity for them to explain and enlighten people uh, with Georgia commute options we're going to do some interactive activities um, one that stressed the benefits of commuting, but also on the options of transit that we offer here currently. They will be uh, refreshments and a chance to win prizes. Uh, we've gotten a, a couple of promotional items that will help people uh, adopt the brand, and so we're excited about that. And um, I think that's, that's the gist on, on the open house. Currently, we have about 45 confirmed guests, uh, and that's not counting elected officials. Uh, we worked with external affairs in the communications department to get the word out. We've pretty much put everything on social media as well as e-blast throughout the county and to community partners. The, um, the transportation um, the current Greta bus is the routes that are currently in play. Will they be coming back at this time where people can get yes. off and see these? Right yes. I, I'm not American time. The Greta buses in many of our Vancouver's will be arriving back during this time period. So it's a welcome home sort of thing. So it's a customer appreciation as well as a community event <coughs> at the same time. And so you bring up an excellent point as usual, Vice Chairman, in that we will have some of the um, activities out near the breezeway where people are getting off and then within the journey center is where the refreshments and other things happen. So we're taking advantage of the traffic. Okay, good, good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was a specific question I had about the Greta bus. Yep. People will be able to see those, because this is an educational experience about all the facets yes. of yes. transportation. We know what everybody's kind of focused on, but they need to see what else is there. Yes. That's good. Yes, and we did check into whether or not we could get a vehicle, but obviously because they're still in operation, um, we can't just have one, one yeah. out there, right? But yeah. people will be getting off, and that's why we have the time window that we have, 4.30, 6.30, because we'll catch some of those first riders coming yeah. back yeah. home. And you said the bus won't be there? The no. buses, our buses will be there? I'm yeah. talking about Greta. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. have a path. Yeah. 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 Ours will be there. Yeah, yeah. okay, keep going, guys. So uh, another big item, of course, is um, our public hearings. Uh, and we have supported um, those efforts in terms of assisting Gary with the presentation and collaborating uh, with public notices. We will be there tonight and of course on the uh, next day. Um, in support of ongoing education efforts, we are also doing community lit drops as um, indicated in our previous timeline. And in addition to just the regular Connect Douglas literature, the flyers as well will also be distributed. And 
that summarizes our current efforts at this time. Was I supposed to pass these down? Or these three different packages? If you could pass those down, please. My bad. It's okay. Mark. And, and we are planning a series of at least four public meetings uh, where we'll uh, disseminate uh, most of this information. Right. Mr. Well, Volker, you, you, have, you said, have you thought about this at all? That this is just us talking. I, I have not. But what, what, what would you think for your, you know, we have the public hearings, the two required by law, FTA, you know, funding, but then we have the four uh, public meetings that are respectively in our district. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you have any ideas, or are you just going to go with what's you know, proposed by staff and our consultants as far as where do you think we should have this meeting? Oh, well, in, in districts, I, I'm thinking districts. Yeah, let you. yeah well, we uh, have history with, uh, with several of the churches, uh, mostly along the, well, Highway 5 and, uh, and Chapel Hill Road, uh, and I think probably. Uh, We've got a new pastor at uh, Shepherd Hills United Methodist Church. Have you have you spoken to? Him? I, I have reached out to the um, that particular church mm -hmm. when we were planning during phase one. Early, yeah. Yes, sir, I did. Yes, sir, I did. Mm -hmm. And what was their demeanor? Um, no, they were they were agreeable to the hosting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were usually pretty supportive. So. That's a good location. That's right on the Chapel Hill Court, mm -hmm. across from the Publix on Chapel Hill. It's very central. Yeah. It, uh, and we commissioners were thinking of the library over there. It's part of the route somewhere over there. And that, um, mm -hmm. and, um, I need to think the district to uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll just it's, have some yeah. thoughts about being able yeah. to contact and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just to represent the public that we are talking about this and we are thinking sensitively of uh, making sure that they have it. But, uh, yes, we're good. Certainly. Yeah. If I may add, yes. uh, because we, we did some initial discussions about this and we were only waiting to schedule these uh, upcoming community engagement efforts once routes were finalized, which is why you didn't receive the initial drafts of the communication asking mm -hmm. you for your dates and locations. Mm -hmm. I would like to offer um, that um, I know that we have some tried and true locations, but once the routes are, are formalized, that prep, we make certain that we do some activities on the routes themselves, um, whether they're pop-ups or the actual meetings, because I think we're impacting a different set of people or, or reaching yeah. a different audience who may not be aware, but because they're in close proximity, they will be impacted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Henry's his point because it comes right along there by him, and that's why his library was mm -hmm. kind of, to yeah. your point, was on the route. Now I'm thinking about Walmart. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud to your very point, it has to be on the route. Yes. So I won't belabor it. No, yes. We'll take your suggestion. Got it. You're good? As okay. best we can. Okay. I'll hold you to it. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, there's, there's some touching of routes in the third district, but it's very, very northern part. So, yeah. yeah. It's on. We'll, we'll, we'll be, all right, so but to that point, um, and, all right, so let's keep this clear. Because again, we will have one more meeting in November, and then we get into the budget and, and the holidays, and everybody's checking out. So I just want to make this, this meeting thoughtful as it goes into the into December. All right, so, so in other words, what we plan to accomplish. Um, I won't have any more meetings. I'll have my town hall next week, but that'll be it. Um, I'm just trying to think through, while we intend to get people's attention, we're doing this during a holiday. We, this is scheduled toward the end of the year, right? And, and, and I get it of what our thoughts are, but we're, we're going to be competing. So I guess we're, we're taking whatever experience we get, whatever they give us, we'll take that, and it, won't, it, it can't be an indicator of, of, of um, success because people may or may not participate because, again, you're going to be in conflicting modes at that moment, right? Mm -hmm. I'm listening to what we're saying. Like, okay, guys, you know this is about to go into the holiday. You know we're about to lay this out during that period of time. So I don't, I don't I want to <coughs> set the right expectations with that. That being said, um, you've got these four district meetings, and so um, there's communication. And I, I got your schedule. I'm sure you're going to go over it. But, Gary, um, the, the two public hearings and the four public meetings are really the essence of what's the core statement for it. Is that accurate? That, that's the core 
work that they'll be doing. However, by no means will we have these four public meetings and then there won't be anything else. That, that's what you know where I was going. It's like, okay, yeah. no, we're not even live yet. Yeah, it, it will be a continuing effort uh, through the, the first of the year and all. And, and so again, this, this part of it got us to a place of, of, of funding, right? Going through the necessary, are we talking to the community, are we out there, are we going above and beyond, et cetera. But I, I, I would like to see how will we extend this because again, this is important as we launch, right? Right now, we're still in a planning phase. We're still planning the system. Um, but when we go live, there's gotta, you gotta give the Board of Commissioners assurances that the, the, the communication marketing can extend at least through the launch. And, and, and so I'm gonna let y'all work that out and, and come back to the board on um, really what that looks like. Because again, we stop, we come out the first year, and now it's time to let people know, but then yet our communication, um, I'll leave it at that. I can't think that far. Okay. If, if I may, to your earlier point when you were speaking to the uh, third party provider, you also asked about feedback on how we would know if the routes were successful. And of course, um, the ridership data will tell us whether a route is working or not working, if people are riding it or not riding it. That's quantitative information. It doesn't tell us why people aren't riding it. So engagement really does have to continue on. Um, metrics tells us what, but it doesn't tell us why that's happening. So the conversation will continue. Good. Mr. Walker, you okay? Good. We'll keep going. Gary, anything else you want to cover on this? I think we're good on that. All right. Just keep pushing, guys. Daniel, thank you. We'll see you tonight. You. All right, so are they up tonight or is it just FTA? Um, are they on the I'm, I'm going to be hosting the, the public hearing, but Danielle is going to be there as, as support, and she may help need to help me with the, the task of dealing with the computer. So okay. uh, we'll, both of us will be there. But if the public is there to ask a question related to this issue, this issue but she, she is officially on call with somebody from them to be able to speak to yes. questions because it is a legit um, yes. that's about it, right? Yes. Commissioner Walker, would you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And, and if I may, I need to acknowledge another team member, Danielle Hoover, also joined us today oh, and may sure. be there on Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Did I not acknowledge you earlier? I snuck in quiet. Okay, all right. I, 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 I so good to missed. see you again. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, Miguel. Okay, yes, Chairman. The, the next item on the agenda is a discussion about the uh, uh, cutaways uh, wraps. Yeah. And uh, initially, I think a couple of meetings ago, we talked about, well, there's a potential for a full wrap, and, and these are not the edible. Yeah, if I got to. Uh, decorative kind. Yeah. Uh, or, or partial. And I think we, we've honed in on uh, where we want to go, where we need to go, and I'll let Gary get it to sure. each of us. Okay. Give your hand out. The, the top page is uh, related to the fares that we'll be talking about in a few minutes. The other is uh, the other sheets give you uh, views of what the Cutaways. My two seconds for second page for a card. Okay. And uh, the collaborative firm Danielle did most of the work on having this designed and identifying a graphic artist who um, put these on the, the cutaways for us. And as you can see, this. This is what's called a partial route rather than a complete route. <clears throat> and <clears throat> one of the reasons that we went with a partial route is was the cost. A, a full route was in the neighborhood of $6,000 per vehicle. Uh, this is a little under $3,000 per vehicle. So this, this is what we're proposing uh, that our, our cutaways and vans look like. Going okay, forward. This is, okay, so this is this is the bus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's actually one of our buses that they now this is just this is an overlay, right? We didn't really do this, right? So it may look a little it, yeah, but the uh, these will be on on the type of film that you can't see into the bus, but the passengers on the bus can see it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know they were going to have bike racks on the front. Mm -hmm. I guess I was just asleep at the wheel. 
so to speak. No, it's not that in. It was okay. more than the last one. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. I mean, I, I'm going to yield to what yeah, we used to say. We we'll, we'll, we'll yield to the experts on this. Um, mm -hmm. um, in what, in this I'm not creative per se. I mean, I've got a creative side. I'm, I'm looking at and I, as we said, we'll actually have one of the cutaways and one of the bands Tuesday for everyone to see okay. real life. Yeah. We're good. Okay. All right. But I agree with you. Um, the full, we really didn't price that in, is what I'm hearing, the, the full wrap, Miguel. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're, what's being proposed us to go with the semi wrap or half a wrap? Yes, sir. Partial wrap. Partial wrap. Partial wrap. Partial wrap. And, and frankly, one of the things that, that we discussed early on was the, the ATL, as we move forward, is going to want to have some presence of the vehicle. Yep. And uh, I don't know how big a presence they need, but it looks like the center of that target, you just put ATL in there. <laughs> I like that what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, powered by, okay, I, I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll let y'all work that one out. Mike, I'm fine. Yeah. You good? Mm -hmm. Go with it. Okay. So do we need to make a motion on this one? Um, so is there a spend here, or you already got his budget? What are we saying here? That's we we'll have we have that in the budget. That's when when we added money for the last commission meeting yes. for the for mm -hmm. the buses. Yep. The this the rep is rep is included. Okay. In that. Done. It is already that mm -hmm. we duly noted. No action is necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Continue on. Let's keep moving, guys. All right. Well, the next item is is a discussion about, and we actually started having a discussion a bit about it, and that is the, the fare related yeah. to, to bus service. And one thing that I'll say about that, Commissioner, is in our discussions with Cub County, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and because we're sort of relying on them, not sort of, but we are relying on them to to get at least one of our routes the rest of the way we're where it was intended to go initially. Yep. Uh, we would anticipate that we would collect fares on the way out, and they, Cobb County, will collect the fares on the way back. And mm -hmm. so whatever we collect, let's say we have 100 uh, passengers that travel to H.E. Holmes, we will collect fares from 100 folks, and it would be at whatever we set it, and we get to keep that. Then, when they come back, they're paying Cobb County to enter their system, to enter their, system their fare. Mm -hmm. And so, to that end, that is a component that I think it would be worth keeping in mind in that we, you know, we are going to basically be performing very similar services as Cobb, but our Rates may not be identical or might be similar. Them code sharing, I, I can't remember, but code sharing, um, Delta Airlines, Air Mexico, Air France. Um, it's invisible. I, Pricing is invisible. Right. Yeah. And I just keep, I, I'm all the way through, right? I, yeah. I, 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 regardless of what's on the brand, the wrap. Mm -hmm. I, am I getting it right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that, that's one I got component it. to. I get it. And then uh, Gary's gotten quite a bit of information related to the region and uh, nationally even. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gary can go over that. Okay. Well, I, I looked at a couple of different type systems yep. in compiling this chart. Some of the systems are the larger ones in Georgia, yep. like Cobb and Gwinnett. The others are uh, smaller systems throughout the FTA Region 4, which basically includes the Southeast, that I felt like were a good match to what we're trying to do. And so you see the comparison. It's um, way small, so you'd like to talk us through it with me in mind, please. This is way small. But go ahead. Well, right. yeah. in, the, in the smaller systems that I feel like would be a good comparison to us, their their fares in the are in the one dollar, one twenty five, one seventy five range. Is that more like a dollar ride? Is that really a comparison? No, this, 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 this is fixed bus. This is fixed bus. Keep going. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Gwinnett County's fare is two fifty. Yep. Cobbs is two fifty. Yep. Uh, so some of the the larger fares have a a larger. Uh, 
there that they charge. Yep. So, I mean, really, the fares are kind of all over the place. Is Carol on here? No, I didn't include them because they're dial ride. Okay. I keep on. Uh, fine. So the fares are sort of all over the place, and I I feel like it's it's going to be a matter of where we just uh, pick a price point that we think the people of Douglas County will be comfortable with paying uh, to use the bus service. All right. So within the the ATL, the 13 counties uh, that make up the 13 counties, 13 districts, the new ATL. Um, do you have an app? I mean, what's the, I heard Cobb. Did you say Cherokee? Cherokee's on here. Okay, but the, give, give those 13 counties, what do you have? Like, just real quick, top of mind, what, what, what are the numbers? Within like, Cherokee is what? Cherokee is 125. Yeah. Um, Cobb is 250. Cobb is 250. What's Clayton? I don't have Clayton on here. I think they're part of the same thing. What is the cab? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're part of Mar. They're part of the broader Mar. Yeah. They're all 250 then. Mm -hmm. Clayton, because I get on Clayton, I've done that before going to the airport. So, um, I think maybe a better correlation is maybe the number of buses. And, uh, for example, Albany, Georgia, they operate eight buses. Right. And they charge a dollar. And uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, they have nine buses. They charge a dollar and a quarter. Those are the two closest. Uh, you have Huntsville, Alabama, 13 buses, they charge them a dollar. And of those three that I mentioned, they charge about half that for seniors. So 50 cents for seniors. I, I'm not sure about that. Well, uh, could you break this? This is my point. This is like, on one hand, and again, this is our com uh, identity. Two different worlds depends on how you see the world. Uh, if you have people who perhaps migrate from the east to the west, who we'll already have a, a natural proclivity and understanding of what pricing is. I mean, I'm just using that as a general rule. In other words, 250 is the bogey. Right? They have been, some people who have not been exposed to it yet, so it may be new per se to them. So, okay, do we know that? that well, okay, 250 may be a lot, maybe it's not, I can't, it's not an argument um, point. But again, what are we part of at that market? We're, we're trying to balance our local, trying to meet our needs of our local citizen, and yet we're part of a region, right? And it's, it's both. And I, and, I, and I know it needs to be a blend, and it's, it's, it becomes, but, what, what, what is that, that number and what can be held? And, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, well, I, I'm back to, and so if we're just picking numbers, and I hear Commissioner Wolk here, we're looking at small systems, all the, yeah, but they ain't connected to the sun in this universe. It's like, yeah, that's down there, but I'm like, we're part of a bigger region, right? This whole ATL that, okay, guys, we're, part, we're partnering with South Cobb and South Fulton. These things, they, they've got some engine that are about to be put on. So how do I now acknowledge the buses? I'm just driving up to whatever they're going to be doing. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it there. But I'm, I'm also saying, but there is a, are we leave, would we leave things on the table if it's less than? I'm not arguing above 250. My question becomes, am I leaving something on the table for fear that, well, 250 may be too little? I mean, it may be too much for our citizens. Because that's really only my argument. Are we saying that, 250 is too much for our citizens? I'll say it. Okay. I'll say that. Okay. I'm thinking 250 is the number. Meaning as a just be consistent. You know, but but then um, therein lies the and now this is where I go back to, but uh, we we both take easy positions. And it's like I'm okay with that, but then I need some math then. I mean, to get more comfortable, the greater the data, the greater you get confidence. Well, well, show me some metrics, and I want to know, okay, how much am I going to have to subsidize on this? I get that, that it's going to cover it, but okay, I still don't have the numbers yet. I get it. So we just, we can just both, he's right and I'm right, we both right. I yeah. Okay, I get it. That's but right. in the absence of anything else, it's like, now it's getting real where, guys, we need data. We just can't. Commit to something and like, oh, okay, it's whatever it is. Like, no, I'm not on this decision. 
and stuff. So I'm saying, homie, to like, no, let's just get the math right. <coughs> then take your position. One of the things I've always tried to pride myself on dealing with my condition, like, no, let's do the math first. Then you can go be political and go to your corner, right? But I, I don't want this to be like, okay, we're just guessing. Let's just do the math to see what, 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 what we really think the little rise is going to be. How much am I going to have to put up this? If, I, if anything to suck me, I don't know this at this moment. Well, we do have some numbers for you, Commissioner, on, okay. on the Douglas County okay. uh, line. And I've had conversations with Jennifer Holland about this. Uh, for, our, for our first year, uh, we're basing it on a $2 one-way adult fare. Uh, $2 one-way adult fare. We're, we're oh, my, my $2? Okay. All right, so 2252 two, I mean, okay, yeah. keep going. We are, we're estimating 121,000 uh, one-way trips and uh, an annual bus service fare revenue of 125,000. Now, those, those two numbers may seem like they don't add up when you do the multiplication, but you've got to to keep in mind your, your senior and disabled and student fares. And by by federal law, those fares have to be 50% of your normal fare during non-peak times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and truthfully, my suggestion would be rather than dealing with non-peak times, I, I would just make that the, the fare for seniors and disabled all the time. What is that, $2? $2 or $1? Yes, sir. Oh, oh, yeah, we're going to have more data than that. I, I, I mean, you have to, you know, if, if they say, in God we trust, I got I to gotta go deeper on this one because, again, I get it. I get it. Uh, and, and I get it when we're, we're trying to uh, accommodate. But it, it doesn't comport with me that I'm part of a bigger region. And it, it's like, okay, I get it. And, and it, so on one hand, I, I look at the dynamics. On one hand, we want the economics, uh, the pay structure for our staff that matches Atlanta. We like, okay, we gotta compete with Atlanta. We gotta do these things with Atlanta, right? So we, we on one hand, we don't want to land over here, but on the other hand, we want to embrace Atlanta. I'm looking at these numbers. I'm like, gosh, y'all right across the street. We're not in Albany. We're not in some southern. We're not in Carroll. And I'm like, okay, but I'm like, okay, can we hedge a little bit? And I'm not saying absolute. I'm saying, can we hedge a little bit to the east? Because again, we're, we're acting like that it's not, it's not going to have an impact, that there's not going to be a carryover, that there's not going to be a lift of being so close to. And I'm, I'm just well, like, okay. Yeah, well, let, let me remark uh, in, in this regard, you know, you make good analytical points about the access to a greater system of equalization and, all that stuff. People are going to open that little wallet, that little coin purse, and they're going to pull out a dollar, or they're going to pull out two dollars, and they don't give a flip okay. about all this, uh, you know, regional connections and what's, what could be, what could be possibly accessible and convenient for them or, or available to them. They're not interested in that. They're interested in what they're pulling out of their wallet. Okay. He, he brings a good point. So now let me give you my, my what they say. So I, I ride taxis. Right. I do lift. I do the very, I, I lift price. This is experience. I know what that cost structure is. I know what the lady at the Waffle House, I've done carpooling. I know exactly how they like. And the current structure is such that the taxis are just got I me. Mean, it is what it is right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, well, it, it ain't like we're starting from scratch. You know, we're, we're talking. So let's take people who really don't, you know, go back to the different segments of people who are going to be on this thing, right? And who will use it. So. Depends on who you're trying to craft your answer for. If you're trying to craft it for the seniors, yeah, I get it. Or maybe the teens, okay, maybe. But there's a big pocket of people who like, okay, I gotta get where I gotta get to. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you, you see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm like this, and I, again, I'm not splitting it for that, but I'm like, but show me the numbers to show that, okay, for each of those segments, there should be a contribution to the whole model. I mean, I, and, I, and I get you, but I'm saying, but guys, in the absence of anything, the bogey is 250. They're using Greta now. I'm just, I'm just sorry, keep saying Greta. Certa, uh, people do go over to the broader Atlanta system, meaning whatever it is. And so it, it's not like, um, and, and I hear you, I, I'm just not so yet that we've done a good job of just justifying what our, our, what they be, would be with it. And have we asked them? You know, go back to their economics. Well, that's a good question. Yeah, mm -hmm. go, go back to your economics of the moment, which says that. 
But Douglas County is not broke. We'll keep, I'm going to we'll okay. we'll come back to this point about like what's in their wallet, but it's not broke, right? Which means that we, we, we do have income. We do have affordable living. You know, in other words, like a lot of people are moving from it, but full to the top over it here. We, we know how the shift is happening, right? So I'm like, okay, yeah, guys, I get it. But I'm like, I, I don't think that we're so impoverished uh, that, that now the whole premise is that my mobility will allow me to improve what's in my wallet. I understand my current hand, but my, my, the goal is that I'm not going to stay that way in theory. If, in fact, that was the whole point. It's not just a joy ride where I just spend my 2 dollars and sit and that's it. The whole point is I'm part of a bigger system in which I should grow. I should have better, more, I, I can get to work consistency and maintain what's in my wallet to make my bills pay, or I can get on the system and get a better paying job. And so I'm like, I get it. I, right, you, right, I can take a data point in a moment in time like a balance sheet and say that's it. But it doesn't reflect, you know, as far like cash flow better. It's how you move. It's like structure versus pattern. And I'm like, okay, Mike, I think you're right. I hear you. But you got to factor in that we're just not in isolation. And so, but, but again, I still think we need data. I need data for my decision. You know, I clean it up. No, no, we're, we're yeah. good. But I want, and the only reason, I just want to get it right. I want to be able to, you guys, I, I hear you, but I'm going to have to push the point. No, I need, so I can look my peers in the eye, especially as he, as he you know, I want to make sure we got this number right. I don't want to be like, well, it sounds good. I mean, like, I'm going to disagree with them for the heck of it. Like, okay, but I still need my data because I got to live with this. Okay. And I don't want to be in a position where, no, we can't miss this math, guys. There's nothing you can say that says, well, I, and it's almost like with Foxhall. Like, I, I, I won't miss on this. It's like, no, you're giving up too much. There's nothing you can rationalize to tell me that, okay, y'all gave up too much on this, but I'm okay. Likewise, I'm like, okay, we're leaving a lot on the table on this, but uh, okay. But I don't, I mean, I don't have to be there in this place now. I'm in a place now where it's like, no, get it right. And I can't sit here and it's not going to be, we're going to toy with it, you know, like, well, kind of like, guys, no. Get the number right, then we can go to our corners. So, Mike, we're good. You know and I are good. I'm fine. I heard what you had to say. We're, we're okay. I don't want to belabor this, but I need staff, or I need y'all to work with me to get us what we need so we're sure. And then, and, and if we choose to, Okay, we're just going to give it up like that. It's going to be $2. At least I know what the number is. And I'm willing to acquiesce because it's with the broader board of commissioners. And I think to this point, you know, let me let me finish this so we can keep going. I'm not certain I want to make a recommendation yet to the full board of commissioners on this. Are you asking us to make a no, recommendation? No, so I'm just asking you to consider it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I want to take this one to the whole. Is that all right? Sure, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and Commissioner, to your point earlier about you need the numbers, and, and we are working on developing or refining those numbers because these numbers are going to be projections early on. Until I we have that. actual mm -hmm. ridership, actual it ridership. Is, is going to be a projection, and so so we have so, sort of the initial cut on the projection, and that's the numbers that, that, uh, that Gary's presented on, on the spreadsheet. We can, based on the tweaking of the routes, uh, fine-tune these projections that's but that's as far as we're going to get right. until we right. and we're going to have to set the rate before we can get the actual and, projections. And to, yes. and to that and point, numbers. we can go up we can go up on the fare but i don't want to keep people off the bus I, I, but here's what they're and i, I give you got to remember who you're talking to. I know everything. I'm, I'm the guy who went in and looked at Project Silver Scope over there with Casper. Like, guys, I know how to look at a 500 page business plan and you know, look at financial. I know that they're estimates. I know, like, okay, that assumption is too. So, trust me, what I'm saying is, like, I hear y'all guys. I still need what I need. You still got to give me, you got to put something in writing and put it in front of me. You can't give me my hand saying, this, trust me, no, you got to, no, it's the opposite. I can't just take your word that like we got these no we'll print. I'm, I'm going to look at this. So I'm, I'm if it's here, I'm going to look at it. But you got to give us something, guys, that we could. I, I know their forecast. I, I guys, I understand this, so I don't want us to belabor the point on what I'm looking at. I'm like, I still need y'all to put y'all. I want to hold y'all accountable. Give me some numbers first. I'm going to overlay the multiplier on that. It's just like the millage rate. You're asking me to give you, you know, degree to a certain mill. Well, you have to give me a budget. You can't just tell me to commit to a mill when you haven't really given me the budget yet. 
It's the same principle. So why are we now abandoning the very practice that we've done? With oh, I don't think we are. But okay, then. I, I just think we, we need more data. data. I don't know. You know, I, that's all I was looking for. Somebody agree with me that I needed more data. But yeah. If, if I can, let me make. And if we're, this is lighthearted, guys. This is not sure, hard. We sure. Just, yeah. a, a couple of uh, comments. Uh, if you remember earlier in the year when we had the series of, of four district meetings about the, the bus routes, mm -hmm. we had big charts up against the walls where uh, the, the individuals who came to the meeting uh, could express their preferences on things. One of the charts that we had was what would you be willing to pay as a fare? Yeah. And we gave them a range from $1, $125, $150 on up to, to $3. And, and by far the most uh, popular number was two dollars. Um, yeah, show us that chart. Bring that back out. But that was back in January when we first started. All this. We're now for a little longer. We know what the bus looks like. We're a little bit more committed. You know, so now are they willing to? It, it has that shifted? So I would like to know. You know, let's go back out. Yeah. It's like polls and everything else. People shift over time, right? Yeah. But I like that. I'm glad that you got that initial data points. Can you dust that out for us? I'll, well, go ahead and for a minute. I'll see if they still have Good. that. Okay. So the Good. second comment is that uh, one of the peer organizations that I've been working with and, and using as a, as a refer, reference point is Round Rock, Texas. Um, a year or so ago, uh, they went through this very exercise uh, yep. that we're going through is starting to figure out bus service. Uh, and I asked them the very question, how did you establish your, your fare of $2 for a one-way trip? And their response was they didn't do any kind of scientific study. They just internally came up with the number that they thought their, their, their public would, would be comfortable with, and that's what they went with. Uh, no, I understand that, and I appreciate that. Again, it depends on the makeup of your board and the different characteristics. We all gonna be true uh, we yeah. are. Yeah. And so the blend of the collective voice is what it is. I need data, he doesn't, it's both. So uh, I, I, I like the even amounts, you know, that's my data. Yeah. I, like, I like the even the even amounts and the split to seniors is still even. All right, but here's my issue. Yeah. So, all right, so check this out. So we're gonna pay $2 going out. We gotta pay two fifty coming back. So now we got an inconsistent, and it now, you, you under, I mean, it's like, okay, yeah, I gotta think through this all the way. And that's when I'm like, yeah, but. No, uh -huh. now I see your data point. This is what's called, Cobb is getting, you wanna keep it the same. It, 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 it just, yeah. and that's what I'm saying, we're, we're yeah. not, we're part, and again, I gotta play, I gotta have yeah. multiple hats. I'm okay, I'm not belaboring this. Since we're not taking an action today, this is something to consider. I mean, I heard him right. to the flat that even made the official that might weigh in on his number, I'm just not so. so <laughs> But I'm okay. I mean, but I, I want to acknowledge what he said, and I don't disagree per se. You know, as ways well, to seniors and everybody else, it's a dollar, two dollars is a flat there. Keep it even. Forget it. As you said, he was talking about don't put so much change in there, adding quarters, all the comments you guys are making. I get it. I just, I just need to have a little bit more assurance. I'm a little bit more needy. All right, guys, let's keep going. Anything else on that? No, sir. Yep. Miguel, are you okay? Uh, are am. you okay with your hearing? Uh, I am. The only the only comment I make about the quarters is uh, that I also heard they they add up. They start weighing uh, stuff down. They they add up. So that doesn't necessarily order. mean that uh, handling them is is such a bad thing. Anyway, I'll that's like pennies on spots, right? You know, like well, you know, yeah, pennies like, that come through this guy's were a hundred and thirty million dollars spots. Do y'all know how many pennies that is? Yeah. All right, keep going. Okay, all right, uh, the next item on the agenda is related to uh, the amendments to the county ordinance and, uh, and uh, to that mm -hmm. I do have, uh, and I think certainly at, uh, at the, on the agenda tonight, yeah. uh, and as I presented yesterday, there's going to be a request for a public hearing. What yeah. I wanted to do today was have a little more information about what is coming. Okay. And and to that end, uh, the first item is uh, the amendment to code section seven, uh, 1472, which is the restricted truck routes. Okay. And essentially there we're looking to add two routes, North Baggett and Beechwood, as we discussed yesterday. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we have talked about the Douglas Hill and Factory Shoals very early on, I'm probably late last year even, right. uh, about that, so I won't spend too much time on that. So the, essentially the public hearing is, is going to 
provide public uh, uh, the opportunity to the public to weigh in yes. uh, as it relates to this. Uh, there's no action item at this point on, on this one in particular. Yeah. The, the other uh, code amendment that we need to deal with is, is the uh, speed limit uh, list. And to that, I think we have quite a bit more information. And let me uh, introduce a member of uh, our transportation staff, Mr. Bruce Mercer. Bruce, welcome. Thank you. Come on out. And have a, come on over here. He has, uh, he has done a young's uh, yep. job in, in Mark. Thank getting you, the information put together, and, and uh, I'll give him the opportunity to go through uh, in more detail as to how we got to who we are and why we need to do what we're doing. Yep. Okay. We got the floor. Okay. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'll give you just a little bit of history. Um, I'm a recent retiree from Clayton County for, for almost 30 years. Um, part of my assignment there was to manage Clayton's um, speed detection device for over 20 years. Yeah. So um, when I started here back in April, one of the first things I wanted to look at to make sure that we were covered um, with accurate information and so that our officers could, could um, facilitate citations as needed was to go through the rec existing radar permit, which I have tabbed here as the LOR 02-2015-01. Okay. Um, in doing so, you'll see um, quite a bit of red line marks where we were finding some arrows. So I went through and um, started double checking our limits, our lengths, and just cleaning the overall process up. So everything that you see that may have some scratch through or some modifications to um, to and from limits or road lengths were from evaluating the existing um, permit. Um, in addition to that, when I completed that task, I laid these items out on a map um, through the uh, roadway network system and looked for voids of larger roadways that maybe didn't show up on my map as having the ability for us to run radar. So in doing so, um, the second tab there for additional roads, I created a list um, of roadways that were not on our current list um, and indicated their limits and their current speeds. Um, I got with the Sheriff's Department and discussed it with them to see if they felt like it was sufficient for them and they would support it uh, to add these, these uh, additional roads, and they did. Okay. So the third tab that you will see there is the uh, combined list of the two. The first with the corrections made that LOR 9 yeah. 2018 would be the proposed um, radar permit that um, we would like to submit for um, signature. So mm -hmm. that is a combination of both. Um, I was, I was fortunate to have a lot of support from the sheriff's side, and, um, and so therefore we worked diligently with GDOT to get this information submitted and back uh, in a timely manner so we could present it. Do we have to have a speed study on all these additional roads? We do not. No. Because, it was a, it, because it was from the Department of Transportation, they allowed our engineering services to provide that. Okay. <clears throat> So it was done in house. In house, uh, but we did not have to go and have somebody else. Yeah, I mean, but it was done in house. It was done in house at some point in the past. Correct. We didn't do it as part of this process. That is correct. Okay. We we use the existing speed limits that mm -hmm. were currently mm -hmm. posted. That's gotcha. right. Is and it and into compliance or conformance? We look conformity. We are <clears throat> revising the existing document and adding. Twenty or so more. Yeah, there's, there's there was a I just I added it um, during the downtime. There was 105 initial streets, uh, roads, and we added 44 to go to 149. Roads, Mike. Mm -hmm. in, uh, it, it, uh, impressive. Thank you. Yep, looks good. And and one of the things uh, that uh, we also have to contend with is the, the Georgia DOT has changed 
their policy, and actually even uh, the Department of Public Safety, they, uh, the Georgia DOT doesn't want to have uh, multi-jurisdiction streets uh, on the same list. For example, we used to have city of Douglasville or whatever it was within embedded within the county list. They no longer allow that. Mm -hmm. So the list had to be changed to extricate all of those. And, and now they, they're reflected on the city side and it's being coordinated with, with the various uh, you know, agencies. But, but that doesn't include the streets we took over as probably part of SDS though, right? Those are ours? No, no, those are ours. Okay. That's where I was about to go, but it, it, let's say we did it on Riverside. Remember how Mike used to go in, out of city, in, out of mm -hmm. home? How would that happen? Like how, how, did, how do you bring that into conformance with a, 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 a road that long? If, that if, if there is a good uh, logical segmentation, and they will do that, that you can have a road uh, that goes from point A to point B yep. in the county, and then it goes from point B to point C in the city. Mm -hmm. You can have that, but you couldn't have it go from A to C in the county and A to C on the city list. That's what they're getting. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So sequestered kind of. Mm -hmm. right. So, so you, what uh, action you want to take? So this is going to be on the board of commissions for formal adoption. Th this is this is not going to be on the, on the agenda tonight. It's just a request for a public hearing. It's going to be on the agenda at the next meeting when we have the public hearing. There will be an item for adoption of this list. Yep. Yeah. And that will okay. be a, co a, a code amendment. Now, as I explained uh, yesterday, we have to have a code change so that when the sheriff applies through the uh, Department of Public Safety, yeah. they're using the same list. So there's going to be two items coming up on that agenda. Yeah. One to change the code, and upon adoption of that item, the next item or something beyond Somewhere that, down the line somewhere down the line on the same agenda the, the same evening or mm -hmm. same day. Uh, there will be a separate item to uh, authorize the sheriff to apply for radar permits for this list of mm -hmm. right, So you're working with the agency. We've already worked out some of the details, Mike. I said yeah. we go with the administrative concurrence on it and just send it to the full, I mean, the body of work stands for itself and just let it go. Go straight, go straight to go. Is that fair, Mark? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very straight to the board for this is for the public hearing. Thank you very much, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Pleasure. Alrighty. Thanks, Bruce. Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. So the next item on the agenda is, uh, and this is an action item. Actually, we have two two coming up, and uh, I briefly mentioned them previously. Yeah. Uh, we're ready to have a scoping study uh, contract awarded for the DDI uh, Divergent Diamond Interchange at uh, Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. It's not Thorn Road? Uh, no, the Divergent Diamond is at Chapel Hill. I mean, oh, okay. All right. Well, I mean, that's a good joke, right? Uh, not that humor. No, no go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is... And, and I so, got you. <laughs> And, and item number seven, very similarly, is the Lee Road extension. We talked right. about that as well. Mm -hmm. what, what these are going to be, they're, they're sort of like a feasibility study, but they have predetermined outcomes or right. outputs. Uh, you, uh, when you get into a complicated uh, design element, you, want, you don't want to spend a lot of effort uh, trying to define it first. You, you look for the alternative that is best suited to solve the issue at hand. Right. And that's what this will do. Okay. So, so this exercise, for example, on Lee Road, yeah. is going to go to determining what is the best alignment to get us from Route 92 to Beaumont, mm -hmm. and from Beaumont to Chapel Hill. So it's more of a discovery, then we go into defining and then defining. Then the next exercise after that, so the output from this is going to be a recommendation on an alignment. Okay. The next exercise is going to be, okay, design it, how wide, how, although we have a sense for what it is. Yeah. But now go get data and uh, find out if you have to bridge over a, a body of water, okay. how long yeah, the yeah, bridge, yeah. all of those details. So, okay. But this is essentially going to get us to Here's the alignment. 
uh, here's the cross section that we think will solve the, the problem that you're trying to solve, yeah. and uh, that gets actually approved by the Georgia DOT. That forms the basis for future uh, funding requests for the DOT as well. Okay. So, uh, so what I, what I will, what I'm requesting today on item six and item seven is a. Uh, a recommendation to the board to award a contract on both of these uh, two separate contracts. Two separate contracts. Two, two separate uh, outfits. The DDI contract yeah. on Chapel Hill is is uh, the recommended. Yeah. Um, we will keep these separate. Yeah. We have, yeah let's let's talk about the DDI because that one has a funding component as well. That is, uh, we're going to have to contend. With. So item number six, the, uh, the budget that we had in our capital transportation fund was 235000 The amount that we need to award for this contract is 354500 Is this somewhere so here in this paperwork, that what you're talking? It's, you not on that, it's not on that paperwork. It will be on when this comes to the board. As an item, right, but you want a recommendation right yeah. here. I, I need. Well, you need the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, can we I can get you. Yeah, I can write the numbers down. So, so again, for for KCI, the consultant uh, for the Chapel Hill DDI. Mike, can you? Are you know about this firm? Are yeah. we just going with a straight recommendation without? I mean, I'm going to yield on that. We'll get into it. But is that what we're saying? Yeah. All right. So it's three hundred and fifty-four thousand five hundred dollars. And that amount that was budgeted was a couple of years ago, maybe even four years ago. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. Okay, but well, it was a long time ago. No, okay, that number was put in. The it's okay. We already talked about scope and how things move. It's okay. So now we're up to three fifty four. We only put we only hit two twenty four regardless. Two forty five. Two forty five. Two thirty five. We had <laughs> You said two forty five. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. I wrote down two thirty five. No, you saw the number. So, but so it, no, no, we need another hundred twenty thousand allocated. So, so where is that money coming from? Capital transportation fund. Do we have it? Yes. Yes. Yes, we do. It's a magic fund. Mm -hmm. and just, yeah, just all kind of money. I would recommend paying for now's plus. I, 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 I don't see the gap in the cap transfer. I, I don't see the numbers yet. I mean, Mark, we talked about the finance committee yesterday. We, we're still reconciling, but I think we've cleaned. But to your point, it's been fixed at a certain place. Now we're seeing the number needs to be S re refreshed. I'm fine with that, but we're already down already. We already had everything already allocated for the most part from the buses to everything else. And unless we sit here and my commission will here and replenish, we haven't done that yet. Um, that's yeah, the really intent. Yeah. But duly noted. So okay, current Mark. balance is four hundred I think don't hold me to it, four hundred and fifty nine thousand in the CTF. Mm -hmm. But that does not include take parts of projects that are included in the CTF that are that are coming down the road. Right. So like it's already there's separate phases. No, like no, we keep it. No, we it. Yeah, no. Okay, so what's our alternative source? What's your yeah, suggesting blocks? Uh, my suggestion would be blocks down the economic development portion. Just for the study? Yes. I mean, I, I'm just for the study. I know we've had some, some conversation in a broader committee of the whole regarding that, but I'm okay with the studies um, on economic development, Mr. Walker, but it's, I'll yield to you on this one as an alternative. I mean, it's been remember. The 10 million was sitting there and it's had a certain purpose. This is tied to those broader purposes, but I mean, it, 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 just, it, it has to have purpose. Everything else, all the other dollars have actual purposes, in other words, program. At some point, do we, and maybe, maybe you and I need to have a conversation that says, okay, we're going to put a limit on studies within this economic development and make sure that the real heavy lifting that it's supposed to do gets done. But in the meantime, since we don't have that in place, what's your plan? Well, I'd like to know what, uh, at the end of the day, what what projects to be remaining in the CDF, because we've talked about several several projects. So we need to get an accounting. There's time. 459 right now. I mean, minus. Um, so if you take another 125,000, that'll be uh, 
325 for round numbers. And then the next one, what's the, what's the next one? What, what's the next one we're good on the on the budget. We're good on the budget, yeah, it's in the CTFT. Yeah. Already included. Already included. So that knocks CTF down to 325000 Pretty close. But now, so both of these projects, so down the road, you've got right away coming. You've got utilities, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Along with other projects, you have uh, construction. Yeah. So none of that's included in that. Right. So we already got Lee Road covered then. There's not a financing need. It's already been identified. They said, no, is that accurate? That's correct. Mm -hmm. The DDI shall be with something new that it has a historical value. So I'll support you. Where you going to put on? Lost. But Commissioner, it's not entirely new because there, there was an no. allocation for it already. No, no, it's, it's, it's an additional spread. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the, the allocation, what was it? Reallocated, wasn't it? I mean, did the money go away? No, no, it's, no, it's been in there. It's, it's been, been you're adding it was an additional 135. Listed for oh, a while. Okay. All right. Or whatever the magic, whatever that addition is. The question the, is the one. Yeah, yeah, the difference is uh, what, uh, okay. one. Uh, do you want to take okay. the full amount out of this? Are you saying take the full amount, the previously appropriated money, plus the additional out of this plus economic development? Or are you only talking about the upside? What are you saying to me? Oh, I was saying take the full amount. Simply See, because that's what CTS earned me. That, that, that was um, my point. So now we get a little relief over there. Yeah. I'm with Mark. But I am too. It's awesome. I am too. Yeah. Full amount. All I need is money. I don't care where it comes from. I know. Can you capture that market? That means we need that tonight then. Is it on the agenda tonight or next week? No, that'd be next week. Okay, next one. All right. Good. So Recommend we need a recommendation? Yes. Yes, we need a recommendation. All right. I make a motion um, that we approve this line item for the DDI project to the tune of what? Three hundred and forty five thousand. Three hundred and fifty four five hundred. I correct myself. Three hundred and fifty four thousand dollars. Five hundred. Five hundred. To be pulled from, to be sourced from uh, the 2016 SWAS economic development category. Any motion? I made a motion. Second. All in, uh, no, any discussion. 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 Now, I, I'm. You said money was already allocated. The uh, 235. Mm-hmm. Out of the CTF. So we're talking about. That leave, line, I'll leave it go there. to the balance. Just leave it. Yes, you zero that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. You okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you have Mark, so since we're discussing, I also like to, to that point, let's get a refresh of the capital transportation fund to this committee at a minimum. Um, with yeah. the, with, we're working with, on that. With the, with, but see, these little, little, I get it. It's iterative. So, just whatever, wherever you are right now, give us another refresh. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure he has it. Yeah, one into this, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. With this zeroed out, recognize you got other areas that you're still working on. But at least we know this should be zeroed out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, we need to wait and zero it out after the board approves it. Oh uh, yes. Okay. You can show before and after. All okay. in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion is carried on the DDI. I know we got to go back to the other one. Yes, sir. No, I'm stretching my. I see you. Yeah, I see what you're doing down the chair. I get it. You do be moving, Mike. Okay, um, you want to go back to the other one? Yes, the, the, Lee, the Lee Road extension. Uh, that one, the funding is uh, the out. The current allocation is three hundred fifteen thousand four fifty five, and their proposal is for three hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred and ninety. So the recommendation is to award a contract to Pond and Company. In the amount of three hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars. Right. And how do we find Pond? Who is Pond? The Pond big is engineering company. Very, very large. We we had a, a request for qualifications. Uh -huh. There were several uh, companies that proposed. Uh -huh. The committee met and uh, evaluated what? the evaluation committee for this mm -hmm. for this RFQ. And uh, we honed in on and selected Pond and Company as the company to negotiate with. 
Do we authorize to go forward with this argument? Yes. yes. Okay, that's all I'm asking. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So okay. I just wonder who Pond was in the like, Yeah, okay, yeah. Right, so right, so going. we're now at a point where we can award a contract to get the project, uh, at least a scoping project on it. Mark, do you see these when they come across? Are you part of, the per of that process? Or are you? Mm -hmm. okay. You okay? Just okay. You ready? Ready for a motion? Yep. Ready for a motion. I make a motion to uh, recommend the full board awarding the consulting contract to Pond Incorporated for $313,890. Second. Okay. Any more discussion? Here. Okay. okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Almost done. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is a discussion about the pavement re -ratings. Yeah. Now, we talked about that last year. Uh, as part of the budget request this year, I submitted a BIR, uh, I believe it was 300,000, to, to have the county, uh, the pavement reanalyzed so that we have comparative condition of the pavements. Yep. Uh, Again, it, it is an exercise that uh, was performed probably in the early 2000s uh, using a system uh, that is has fallen out of favor uh, because it is um, rather, it's not very intricate. And so uh, the, the goal was to have a more updated analysis, whether it be something that is semi-automatic where you have uh, ground penetrating radar mounted on a vehicle that runs down the road yeah. and, and collects the data and then assigns a, a condition to that particular road segment. Okay. Or whether it be something more uh, visual with uh, personnel going out to the, to the, out of the field and actually looking and analyzing and using some established criteria for rating payments. And so the, the question is, well, uh, we can continue to develop the lists uh, based on the old ratings, which mm -hmm. are no longer really valid. I mean, they're still sort of relative to each other, but Maybe. the condition of the roads yeah. themselves have now changed to where they're not necessarily reflective of the actual condition. Right. This is how we had this conversation. Yeah. So I, I, I think, um, <coughs> there's a, to your point, it's a year later. We've acknowledged this, we've known this. Mm -hmm. So, um, 300 what? 330? Three, 300,000 would be uh, what, what I would estimate. Not to exceed 300,000, you guys would go negotiate. Have you identified um, a service provider? We have not. not I, I think for something of that magnitude, we would have to have a, a, a proposal, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. yeah. Um, that would just, I mean, yeah, work that out. <coughs> uh, Commissioner Wolf here. Um, is this something that we, now, as far as funding is concerned, I heard you say BIR 2019, is that what I heard? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you think we should put in LMIG, or should we put in a SPOS, um, SPOS part of, 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 of roads? It's, it's very directly related, and it can be spread across all of, you know, as an even spread. Um, all districts. All districts? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I'm just trying you to couldn't take it out of the LMIG. Okay, that's fine. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to be creative. What do you think, Mike? Uh, but it's... Uh, you know, I'm concerned about continuing to add things in the sprawls. I, I but it's, no, but it's resurfacing. We're just doing the engineering work to, re to say what the list should be. It could be, it could come out, well, it can come out of any, any part of the transportation part of the spots, but it could come out of the resurfacing portion that's what I'm talking of the sprawls. You Which right, really wouldn't that. affect, it would be applied to the resurfacing project. No, yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying right there. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. It's something to think about. I mean, that was, that, I mean I'm listening to this. It's like, okay, it's re I want to make sure we're resurfacing the right roads in the right, right. order. Uh, it's related to resurfacing. That's the only place yeah. I would put it, which means, okay, a little less road. Well, it's underpinning the, the splossed determinations. Right. It, it is, and, and frank, frankly, I, I've done it uh, before very much in this fashion because it was a component of, of the SWAS program, and, and so that was an element 
that we went, went there for sure. All right, so wait a minute. So, but okay, well, with spots, and this one, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. If we'll, we'll solve it later. We'll get to refresh the overall spots list. But this spots is growing. I mean, the economy is growing. The, the penny is coming in. Uh, do we have now? I'm going back to. Do we have excess that has grown above beyond in our bucket that would accommodate it? I'm fine with it being part of resurfacing. That means less rolls across the board. I'm fine there. I'm just saying, Mike, I'm fine. Yeah, where's, uh, where's, this, where's this, the post road bridge money? So right now, I'm going. I, I think there's 500 that's allocated for possible right away, or that's what Mullen has allocated. That is a guess at this point. Um, we did take, what was the last? Two eighty two for equipment. Two hundred and eighty two thousand for equipment. That was for the tractors. Mm -hmm. So because the post road bridge was in, in the overall spot. It was in there at transportation two point five to three million dollars. Okay. Well to me that's where the money would So there's still another one point seven and then that five hundred thousand they get added back to it we might not have spent a dime a dime on my way. I'm good with this with the splash the splash yeah. repayment as a source. Yeah. Because we could we could transition some of the uh, post road. Right. It is something we're not gonna pick up until the first of the year, so I wanna make sure if we're committing I need your vote today. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, not January. January. Right, right. <laughs> right. Right, well, so I don't want to kick this can. I want to be definitive in that. Mike, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Be solid on the vote. So. And, and and to to your point, Commissioner, if if the funding source is the spot, then it, you don't have to you don't have to wait, wait January. until January. It's not even a budget item. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you got to pick it back up in the first year because we already we have already depleted this current round. Uh, uh, again, so I'm thinking that the resurfacing will be the ninth, the 2019 resurfacing. So let's say it's. Three million dollars. I forget what it was per year. Um, six years to eighteen million, something like that. So now it's it's two million seven hundred, whatever the balance is. Two two million seven hundred. Because and now you're spreading that across. Yeah. Right. But if we pay it out of the post road bridge, that's totally separate from the resurfacing. We can do it now because we haven't spent. We we have as far as spending money, we're behind in transportation. As far as project progress, we're okay. I wonder, Mike, and I'm I'm I'm. I'm being probably extra season. I just wouldn't want to put it in the post road bridge. I think we can use that for some other bogies. I feel way comfortable just put it on resurfacing, make it even spread. I mean, post roads. Some no, I'm, I'm just thinking down the road. No, no, right. no pun intended. I, I think it's appropriate to come out of a uh, splash repaving with you the potential pay. that it could come out of post road or maybe the, our collections go up, you know, 10% or yeah. whatever. But it, that's where it needs to be. Okay, Mark, we start to stay there. And we'll pick it up in 2019. Miguel, are you okay? I'm not fine. We just need peace with this. Not you, Mark, but it's like we don't have to yeah. accelerate this. And let's go with it, the path of uh, where we all, as all four districts, can all sort of see the benefit of it and, and not like, okay, it's post roll. You're pulling this like, no, let's. Well, I understand where you're coming from. Yep. Yep, no, I'm good. Okay. All right, so do you need a. Well, I mean, that, that was a discussion item at this point. There's no, no motion, unless you were prepared to, to allocate it as lost. Well, then, if, his, if you're not going to move into the first year, he's not here. I want at least to make a recommendation to come out of here that we've got a record. Can we do it that way, Mike? Yeah. I mean, I need his, I need his vote today. I, I would yeah, can you work with me on this? I just need a recommendation. Uh, yes. Yeah, I make, I make a motion to allocate funds from uh, paving SWAST to uh, re-rate our uh, road system condition. Yeah. Out, yeah. And not, not to exceed 300 dollars Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. I just want to make sure. It's a motion. I second that motion. Okay, any more discussion on this, Mark? Do you get that, if this is recommendation? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Do we vote? Motion carries, okay. All right, Miguel, come on, raise your hand. Very good. Okay. Uh, the next item is a uh, holiday signal timing contract. We, as you know, do that every year. Yep. This year, the amount uh, is $25,092 and some cents. Yep. 
and uh, we're looking to split it again if the city is willing, but, uh, but it would require us fronting the money and, and entering it into an IGA with the city. So if it's the, the committee's pleasure, then we will contact them and get this. Well, we can't just do administrative concurrence on this. Uh, yeah, we could. Yeah. We could. I mean, Mark, you mean, I know that right address, and you, y'all, I'm fine. It's every, every year, y'all work out. Yeah, no, we still have to bring the yeah. contract to the board. Yeah, the contract. Right. Yeah. We can do that. But administrative, how about we just agree to administrative concurrence on this item and move forward? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Okay. And the next couple items are just updates uh, and and uh, some discussion. The LMIG or the, the LMIG resurfacing, we have the list put together. It's going to be uh, distributed to all the districts this week. Okay. Towards the end of the week. For uh, 2019 or for, for this year? For 2019. All right. Okay. For, for next year. Yeah. And. Uh, I just want to confirm that the funding source, the match for the LMIG is going to be out of the same source as it was last year, which was lost. lost. Right, so you've heard the deteriorate, you got resurfacing and you got the match for it. Should we mind? Should we push it or should we not? Based on the numbers we're going to have, yes. Mm -hmm. You're going to need it. We're going to need it. Why, why can't we just, I mean, well, we can decide that later. Yeah, I mean, okay, so, well, all right, so, the, the we decision, the decision. Pool, look, the, the, listen to me this way. Yeah, I think we consider your loss of transportation, a big chunk of that part is actually going to road resurfacing, and we got our operating LMIG work. I mean, and it's like we're being, I'm okay if we need to coral something back, we make it a good faith effort. We, we didn't really do this during the, the lean years of the recession. I understand, but I, I don't know if I really am, I, are we really facing a decision where we got to do this? In other words, the spirit of it is that, well, what do we got? What we got? I'm, I'm just my yeah. I'm adding these numbers up, and I'm like, okay, guys. So what we're saying, though, is either, either you take your LMIG and you pay approximately $500,000 out of the general fund for your match, or you use five hundred thousand out of your yearly three million that's allocated for supplies, and use that towards your match, which is five hundred thousand. Yeah, you're shrinking. So now we just took eight hundred thousand out of the, the 2019 uh, resurfacing component based on the math I just heard. But you're using it for basically the same purpose, just under a different program, and you're obligated to provide at least thirty percent. Of the LMIG as a local match, otherwise you do not get the 1.4 million no, yeah. grant from No, no, no. I, I actually get that. I'm just that's what I'm saying. So, but I don't like taking money out of the general fund if I don't have to. Because we, it, it's we've got other issues that we have to do other other yeah. needs as well. Yeah. But if we used the match out of SPLOS, then we wouldn't be taking it out of. Right, but now you're shrinking the the, the, the six make what but three million per year times six is eighteen million dollars. I mean you're you're shrinking I mean just know we know what we're doing the trade off, right? Yeah. Uh, just know uh, and it makes sense and these are these one offs and uh, and so we'll just definitely discuss it again after the treat, uh -huh. like we did last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this just gives us some pause. Uh, how about uh, I'll I'll support moving it forward in the dollar amount with the to be determined source. Do you have to take it when do you have to have this submitted to? Black? I have to have a two G dot adopted by the board before the end of the year. But first we have to get the list to the commissioners. Right. Mm -hmm. For both right. projects. Right. Splots doesn't have to go to G dot. It doesn't. Only the LMA has to Mike, you, know what, you think we need to make a recommendation now or we just let it come to the Board of Commissioners and you put it on a, a line on an arrow retreat? I go retreat. I go retreat. All right. So All right, but there's another component. Uh, well, for this reason, and the reason I needed to know the budget is because I needed to know where the match was coming from for the LMIG so that I could then target my list for resurfacing to two and a half million versus three million. Yeah, actually, 
It does affect yeah, but your you, number. It yeah, does. but you, you, you're doing, but are we solving it? The LMIG, which is your normal operating, are we solving displaced resurfacing? Or are you doing both? Are you doing giving, both? Okay, I didn't hear that. I just heard one. That I heard LMIG list. I didn't hear you going to give me a right, splost list too. Yeah, that, that was the next time on Monday. But your splost, your splost, uh, you don't have to bid that out. Both of them, you don't really have to have that decision. On the splost, no. All I need Unless is you're working budget. on your numbers. Um, I need the budget number because I got to target the list to the budget. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, just stick with, with what we have in the books. Have the resurface seem to be three million. I mean, short of what we just already made up, you know, you know three, well, two million seven, right? Based on resurface. All right, you got two seven so far. And then you got the LMIG, which sounds what's the full amount? Um, um, well, okay. uh, here, here's where I'm going. Like, why don't you just go ahead and max out based on you're assuming that we're going to give you five hundred and assuming that it, it's two point seven. But we know that we can always, like, but we're only going to do this. You're not going to bind us. That's why I said take it to the full board commission. But give us the full list so that we can make a decision on what to scale back. Like, okay, well, i got to cut the bottle. I mean, part of it is it is an active participation, Commissioner Mold here, where I'm okay. The most we can do is this. But we know we got limited dollars. So that means I've got to make a hard decision to say what goals don't get met now. I'm not obligated. It's not a commitment. I'm just trying to keep this easy. Because he's, I mean, I don't, I mean. Here's, here's my problem with, with that approach, Commissioner. I need to develop a list that eventually will be approved by the board. I need to target that list to the grant that GDOT gives us plus 30%. I need to know if the 30% is coming from the general fund or SPLOS because that determines the other list. If I, if I, if I target SPLOST to be the match for LMIG, that means I'm targeting two and a half million that's left for resurfacing. If I give you a full LMIG and a full SPLOST, you got a half a million excess. And so yeah, you I, I hear you. It's really 2.2 .2 million, and, and that's my point. Uh, but that's, that's the point, y'all. Yeah, it, it, it's like, shell game and it's like okay and I'm trying to keep up with this like okay steady um, and I, I get what you the hand is not being forced here I, I think we can just sit like wait to the board of commissioners but can you wait to the retreat what is the urgency between now and the retreat to have the same conversation I know you want to go with the list is going to sell but now we're being political because what you think is going to be passed based on who you're looking at I mean one of the, the district commissioners are like well I don't know if I would do it that way. I think we all reasonable. Don't you got limited money? When's the retreat? November eighth. November fourteenth and fifteenth. Oh, that's right. It's a month from now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I get it. I'm reasonable. He's pretty reasonable. I, mean, I made the comment yesterday that we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we're not obligated. And we don't guarantee that we're going to deliver all the roles that perhaps is on the list, nor are we obligated. We put, we're putting a good faith forth faith effort. We're doing both LMIG and on this block. We can, we can wait on deciphering the SPLOS till the mid November. But I think we'll be cutting it awful close to wait till then for the LMIG. Okay. Well, I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Least, the LMIG yeah. needs to go in. And then you but need we to still working decide on the, the source, quick, which is like. Uh, I but the source doesn't affect the LMIG. The LMIG is the LMIG. But we gotta, okay, but we got to put up a match of 500000 mm -hmm. Either way, we got to put up the match. It well, doesn't matter where we decide right. the source. It's, it's just going to hold up my developing the it's splash holding list. The list but I understand, but you still got to get this in front of the full board of commissioners to obligate, and we got to have a, a funding source where it's going to come out with. And I just don't, I don't feel the general fund, Mike. I, I just, you, I don't, I personally don't feel making it come out of that. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't. Because it, it's, it's tight. It's still steady. The commercial hasn't hit yet. Let's not be like. Yeah. We're facing okay. other things. Right, right. Other things is popping out. So, so that we have no choice. That it's just lost. I mean, as a, as a consideration. Yeah. I'm at lost. Concur. Mark, come on. Mm -hmm. Yes, no? Yes, sir. 
So we go. That means you're down to two. Really, so you got your your answer anyway on the spot. You're down to two, two. You just took three hundred thousand out to the resurfacing, and now you just took out another five hundred thousand for the match for the LMIG for two thousand nineteen, which means your full load is two, three. What I did, five plus three. three yeah, two, 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 two. I was right. Two, two. Okay. I know that. Did you get that though? Do we need to repeat that? What's on second? Uh, Mike, he didn't get it, but it's okay. What's on second? <laughs> He's too young. I no, know. I know what that is. Mm -hmm. All right, no, no, but are we clear two, on what we just said? 2.2 budget for SPLOSS, that's my target. Mm -hmm. 2019. For 2019. And with that, within that, there's a 500,000 match mm -hmm. for the 2019 LMIG. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Yes. And you're going to present us two sets of lists based on this decision right here. Yes. Uh, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so this is just a, an administrative concurrence because ultimately it's going to come from the full board of commissioners. To right. adopt the list. To adopt the list. Right. right. So you move forward. Mm -hmm. Administrative concerns. So I can agree. agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's not real cool. Mark, raise your hand. Yes. I will. Yeah, we need to. I know. See. Anything else? No, nope, that runs us through the list. So I'm good. That, that was that was it was a good meeting though. We, we had to push through this. Yeah. Um, Mike, are you at peace with? I mean, I know there was a lot that we had to cover, but are you at peace? Yeah. Miguel. Yes, sir. Mark. Yes, sir. Gary, you need you got what you need. Mm -hmm. You sure? I'm sure. I know you're over. You know, yeah. Okay. Things are moving forward. Uh, Transportation around there, be it you know, elevated or fast or whatever. We're paving roads, things are moving forward. Yep. You know, my concern and the issues that will be before the commission is some of the parks, parks and recreation projects. They're got us over there. Okay. Gotcha. Steady. <laughs> right, my. <laughs> Steady. Okay. All right, guys. Um, anything else? Mark, anything else you need to do? We're good? We're going to go ahead and get out of here. All right, there's nothing need to come before this um, transportation committee. Consider this meeting adjourned.